Yeah, we're, we're good. We're going. Welcome to Working Title again. Yeah, welcome back, guys. This is going to be another certified banger, I'm sure. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll get views comparable to the Aliens episode. God, one, really one nice can only see. hope. Really nice to see. That's the dream, huh? Yeah, it is strange watching um, how... You know, this is off topic from what we're going to talk about, but it is weird watch, uh, looking at how interactions and, rev- and views differ between subjects or things like music where we think would probably be viewed more than aliens yeah the 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 music episode as of right now only has six views that one and conspiracy both kind of flopped <laughs> those are like both ones that we really liked doing and then i'd say i think wrestling and our aliens one are the two ones that have the the wrestling one was come really fun a, kingdom come had a the only reason I didn't enjoy the Kingdom Come one so much was because I was sick. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I think the next time I do a comic one, which hopefully will be the next one, uh, so just a heads up for that. Uh, the next one, I I plan to... Well, first off, I'm going to reread the comics, and then I'll just have like a, a brief summary on my phone so I can get to the highlights, the broad strokes, yeah, and then I'll, I'll hand you the comic so you can look through the art and stuff. Yeah, so I can look through it and everything. That'll be more interactive, I'd say, all in all. Yeah. Um, but today, we're talking about dreams. Yeah. Uh, we've slept our fair share so far <laughs> in our lives. Yeah, I believe so. Got a pretty solid amount of sleep, and uh, while sleeping in my REM state, I've seen some pretty strange shit. Yeah, so have I. I have actually a, a whole Google Doc dedicated. You have dreams written out? Yes. I didn't prepare. I, you've been preparing for years. I, 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 I even not. I even had a, I even had one last night that I remember. So you've been preparing a lot longer. My than I. <laughs> my brain has been preparing. You've been prepared since before we even thought of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they say that the that one of the keys to lucid dreaming is writing down your dreams so that you can become aware of what's going on in them. I think yeah. to, to some extent last night I was lucid dreaming. Um, and in the sense that I had a, a small control over what I was able to do and what was happening in the dream. Those are always fun. Yeah. Um, but it's been a, a long path up until then. And even now, you know, sometimes it's not always, not always uh, lucid. At the, yeah. A lot of times my dreams to me are like, uh, they're like movies, almost, that I watch. It's almost like you're watching yourself in a show or in yeah, a movie. Or, uh, for, for me, it's always first person. I, like I am, first I am, person? I, it, it feels like my actions are predetermined, but I am still me, you know? Yeah, I have a couple different types of dream that I can't really classify, like, my brain's kind of funky in a lot of ways, and, uh... Like, some of my dreams will be almost like I'm watching myself do whatever I'm doing, almost as a third person, or on occasion, second person. Those ones always, they weird me out. Watching you from another person's perspective. Yeah. It freaks me out. I'll do that sometimes, and it makes me so uncomfortable. It's like an out-of-body experience, almost. Like, I'd see myself walking down the hallway at school, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? There are, it, it there are a few in. dreams I'm probably going to talk about that aren't in here, but I will talk about all the ones in here. But um, I, I'd say a lot of my... I, I don't dream a lot anymore. I used to, and I very vividly remember most of them, but I, I mean, I don't... I kind of just sleep like a rock whenever I get the chance to sleep. Yeah. I'm just so beaten, and I know that tomorrow it'll only get worse. So I'm just, you know, resting. But... On the occasion that I can't get a very deep sleep, sleep paralysis is very common amongst me. Mm. And a lot of them aren't very scary. Like, They're sleep, just weird. Ra- sleep paralysis makes it seem so much scarier than... Uh, for some people it is, but for me a lot of the time, it might be scary, but it's just strange. Or I'm aware of what's going on, I can tell what's happening. I'm just not mm. fully awake. I'm not okay. alert. Like, I could try to move to do something, my arm just won't move. Like, I'm fully aware of the situation. And I'll see things sometimes... Sometimes it's literally just an annoyance. Because I'm laying there, and I can't fall asleep. (laughs) Because I'm just in a state of half and half, where I'm looking at my room. Oh, yeah. And it annoys the shit. Because I don't see anything sometimes, and it's just me being basically awake. (laughs) Pisses me off. 
I have never uh, suffered sleep paralysis, thankfully. Um, to my knowledge, at least. Not that I can remember. So you ever had your whole, like, you ever had, like, you know, part of your body fall asleep? Yeah. But, like, it's not pins and needles anymore. It's just, like, you can't really feel it. Yeah. When you touch it, it feels weird and stuff. Mm -hmm. Imagine your whole body's like that. Mm. And your eyes are kind of awake. And you're, like, your brain's awake and trying to enter a sleep state. And your whole body is in, like, a rest state. So you're not moving. You can just see what's around you. And your dreamy brain can add in... Whatever it's thinking, in the same way a dream could. Oh, okay. So is it like, um, like whenever a limb falls asleep for a really long time, and you try to move it, and it's just kind of cold? That's how you feel. You feel, oh, you, okay. you, you feel like you might be dead. Like right past the pins and needles stage? Yeah, you're just laying there, and you, if you, you can feel the muscles try to move, but you don't. Mm. It's like, you can be thinking, I want to move my arm. But then, like, you just can't move your arm. Oh, okay. And there's some speculation to if you're actually dreaming in this very realistic way, like, you are asleep. Oh. That limb you're trying to move isn't real. Oh, okay. But you know what you look like. So when you're laying there, you can think, like, I'm trying to move my arm, but I can't. In real life, you're not actually awake. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't have a clock... I don't have things. Oh yeah, break. something There's, in your in your in your limited vision that you'd be able to see. And especially because I sleep on my stomach, so it's like I'll be looking off to my right, which makes it really creepy for bad ones. Oh like yeah, I'm, there's I'm, something I'm, right right I'm, on the side of your vision. Because if I'm laying right here on my couch and I look, I'm laying like with my head facing the TV to my right. Everything is everything that I can see up until my, um, like TV stand and everything is very close to me. Yeah. So it won't be a face in my corner. It'll be, like, something facing me, mm. like, three, four inches from my face. Oh. Uh. And oftentimes, like, I can snap myself out of it a little bit. If it freaks me out, I'll wake up, and then mm, it'll be, yeah. it's gone. Like, that's obviously it's not that. real. Ryan from the Super Mega Cast talks about how he had a sleep paralysis once. He was able to get out of it by uh, calling for his dog, and then whenever his dog jumped up on him, it, like, woke, woke him up all the way. I have a, like, I'll try to talk, but it'll come out just like, huh. Mm. Yeah, like, that's I'll, what, that's what he said. He just kept doing it until, like, he was able to get out actual words. Because, like... Until he's able to say, Lego, Lego. <laughs> it, it's really strange. Like, he'll go to say words, but since you're not really awake, your mouth doesn't move a whole yeah, lot, so you're just, oh. you're grunting, like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, it freaks you the fuck out, you're like, I can't talk. This is scary. There was a, a dream, uh, I, uh, Jerma was dreaming once, he was telling a story about how he was dreaming, and he, he said whenever he woke up, his girlfriend told him that <laughs> he was just like, he was just like sitting there in his sleep, you know, just looked like a sleeping person, and all of a sudden he started going, mm! <laughs> 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 I, I, I'm sure I've done very similar, because whenever I'm dreaming, it's intense. Like, I don't have... Some people have constant dreams when they're sleeping, and they're all, like, you can't really remember them, and they're uneventful sometimes. Like, it's yeah. always just a normal day. For me, mine are so intense that I'll wake up sweaty. Yeah, me like, too. I'll, like, wake up crying. Not in a sad way. Like, my and eyes will be watering. Yeah, you like, won't even know why. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I had a great night's sleep. I don't know like, why I'm so upset. Lot, a lot of my dreams are really uh, strange, too. Uh, most of the, I mean, we'll go through them. You know, I have a whole Google Doc full of several dreams that I've had, and I have a couple that are outside of them. All right. But um, one thing that Miranda tells me I do in my sleep is sometimes she'll move, and she'll say that she'll come and she'll look at me, and I'll just have my eyes all the way open. Lexi does that sometimes. And, it is when I will just say cryptic shit to her. Like, I, I, I'll snuggle up real close, and I'll say, um, uh, I... Uh, I'm looking for the tomb of the empty man, or <laughs> something like man. that, or like don't don't disturb the tomb of the empty man, and uh, and then uh, there was another time where she was just like, um, I said, uh, can you read it? it, and she said what, <laughs> and I said the symbols. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have to, I'd have to have her on sometime to to fully sort of. 
uh, break down, because I'm sure, uh, obviously I don't remember these things. I just, I'll wake up and she will tell me you about should, them in the have, morning. You should have her come in and explain. I don't know if I can right now. Just <laughs> grab her by the top of the head. <laughs> Get out of here! Drag her into the room. But, um, yeah, Lexi doesn't say anything, but I'll look at her, and she'll do this thing, and she doesn't have, like, sleep apnea or anything, but she'll, like, be breathing normal, and then for, like, 30 seconds, just not. Oh. And then just we go back to normal. Like it's not <laughs> like it doesn't it doesn't seem like a scare a bad thing. I've told her about it. Like she just like doesn't. She takes a break, <laughs> but sometimes she'll do that with her eyes open, and it'll mm. freak me. Like, I, like if I'm half asleep, I look over, her eyes are open, and I don't see her breathing. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, are you dead or are you not? And then she'll be like. <sighs> and then she'll start snoring really loud. <laughs> like, you oh mother, my god, sometimes sometimes Miranda will snore so loud that I, I'll, I'll wake up and I'll like I'll just say, hey, hey miss, and, and I'll bump her a little bit and then she'll wake up enough that she'll stop snoring, but she's not all the way awake, so it's just like a little snooze yeah. button, a little reset. I know sometimes she'll, I sleep like a rock, and sometimes I snore really loudly and she can't wake me up. <laughs> She, she says, uh, like, she'll be shaking me and stuff, and I won't yeah. be able to wake up. I remember when we used to all share a room and stuff, you did have a tendency to say strange shit and also never wake up. Do you, like, do when you, the cat pissed on you. Do you, do you, you did have, not wake up. Do you have any, like, any memories of, like, the weird shit I've said in my sleep? Oh, this was so long ago. I mean, like, because, you know, you gotta think about... Yeah, this the, was the, the, years the ago. This literally was, almost, like, a decade. Yeah, this was a long time ago. Um, but you'd always, I think you got more cryptic over time because now you're <laughs> older. Yeah, I know but more cryptic <laughs> words. <laughs> oftentimes it would be some nerdy shit. Like, it's almost like it's not, it's something that you would definitely say when you were awake. And it's usually pretty comprehensible. I mean, it would just be like a Transformers reference. Mm. You'd say something that one of them would say. Or you'd say a name. Uh... A lot of the times you'd say adventure, like Finn, like things that Finn would say. Yeah. For adventure time, you'd say just, you know, uh, glob and such. The, the, that type of language that you'd kind of just mumble under your breath mid-snore. <laughs> and Alan has a really fun tendency whenever he's asleep. Sometimes he'll just say half of a sentence and I'll be like, what? <laughs> and he won't say anything because he's asleep. Yeah, you're like... <laughs> it's hilarious. And whenever he sleeps over, he does that. Uh, not all the time. Uh, it'll happen every few times, but it's always a, a cherishable moment. Whatever, I'll be. He'll just be like, "Did the wizard cross the street?" And I'll be like, "What?" And there'll be no response because he's asleep. He's just out. <laughs> that pisses me off. Cause I was like, "Wait, I want to know. <laughs> Tell he, me more. Did he make it?" And I, and I need to know about this wizard, damn it. Uh, my friends aren't fun sleepers. Like <sighs> Jesse, just sleeps like a fucking stone. I imagine it's just because, you know, like like most of us over time, he's just kind of <laughs> he's just kind of learned to sleep when he can, yeah. especially since he used to fuck up his sleep schedule so much. That dude, I mean, there'll be times where you can't wake him up no matter how hard you try. Like I'd be like, "Dude, you got to leave at 12. It's 11:59." And he'll be like, <sighs> and then he'll like knock his dead phone off of the side of the couch. <laughs> and I'll like shove him <laughs> shove him off the couch and he'll like i've pushed him off of my couch onto my floor and he did not wake up all the way he like reacted he like wiped his eyes and then he <laughs> laid it down on his stomach on my floor and went back to sleep <laughs> i was like you're a fucking lost cause i don't know what i can really do this, for is, you it, at this, this point. is it this is it sorry but like, <laughs> i did my best i have this tendency to sleep small is what i call it like you curl up i kind of curl up or i'll huddle towards if there's a wall or like here on the back of my couch I'll huddle towards that and flatten out. Mm. Or if I'm on a wide thing with no edges, I always like sleeping up against curl, something. And I don't know what it, I don't know why I do it. I mean, with her with her house, it's she has a wall on one side of the bed and then not yeah. on the other. And she sleeps on the side without the wall because she likes to see her TV without mm. me being in the way. <laughs> and so whenever we go to sleep, we don't cuddle up. We will until it's time to go to sleep, and, and then, then you disperse. I, I will roll. To where I'm facing her wall, and I'll get real close to it. Like, mm -hmm. tummy touching the wall, nose touching the wall, toes touching the wall. And I'll have, like, a stuffed animal under my head, and I'll kind of cross my arms, and it's just cool. Like, it's it's cold, which I like, and it's a solid surface, but she'll, like, 
she'll look over at me and, and she'll be like, you don't move when you sleep. <laughs> like, I'll stay there flat as a fucking board on my side up against the wall and I will talk to the wall. <laughs> I'll just say things I, that I dream about, I guess. <laughs> and she'll be like, are you okay? And I'll be like, huh? <laughs> and I'll turn my head from against the wall. I'm like, did you say something? She's like, go to sleep. <laughs> and I'm like, I am. <laughs> Whenever I sleep, I like to sleep uh, in like one of two positions. Either on my back with like my arms up and like my legs kind of spread out a little bit. Or yeah. um, like on my, on my side with like my uh, kind of swiveling my torso uh-huh you know what i mean i've always been uh, a, like a like it like this almost yeah a, a little uh bundle at the top where your arms yeah. are up by your head i like I to i like to bundle myself it's I something do i've done ever since i was like in like middle school i think i've always been such a warm boy that i keep my except for i, I cross my arms in front of me a lot just uh, always I'll, I'll do like a like a this that looks so uncomfortable you're like twisting all the way yeah to the right, no i wake up i wake up i wake up and my lower back is <laughs> yeah. just like killing me sometimes I mean, Lex- <laughs> but it's so comfy in the moment like if you were to see me and lexi sleep it's me stiff against the wall I'm as comfy as I can be. It looks uncomfortable. I'm having a great time. Sometimes I'll swivel instead of my hips being like leg on top of leg since I'm on my side. Mm-hmm. I'll swivel to where my right leg is out. So like, yeah, like, I always, like lingui- no matter... linguini on the bed, <laughs> knees on the bed, but my hips are shifted at the top to where my torso is flat with the wall. Oh, uh, okay. Which uh, is comfy to me. But she will fall asleep in the fetal position and wake up like sideways on the bed fucking like holding on to bart which is one of her stuffed animals <laughs> as hard as she possibly can <laughs> Marina always likes to a- sleep with a stuffed animal she always have it snuggled close yeah i mean we ha- we have so fucking many her bed there's barely enough room when you go into her room and i haven't been there in a while it's just been her there will be exactly enough room for one lexi on the rightmost corner where the wall isn't, <laughs> and then the rest, and then the rest is stuffed animals, pillows, and blankets. Yeah, comfy. Mar- but whenever I'm there, we have to take some off so I can slide yeah. into the corner. Miranda has, um, beside our bed, she has just like a, there's a little, there's a little gap between mm-hmm. the bed and the wall. All stuffed animals. We have a lot in there too, but it overflows <laughs> onto the top of the bed. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> how it goes. But I have, I mean, I have Babs, who is my, uh, Penguinus? It's, it's a Squishmallow, but I think it's a Blue Jay. Oh, Mordecai. And then I have uh, Phil the Frog. I have Frank the Sock Monkey that Lexi made me. Oh, and nice. And then I have a Bulbasaur. You have Franklin Monk? Yeah, Franklin Monk. <laughs> that's, why call, that's why I named him Franklin Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes Franklin sense. Franklin Monkey, because he's Frank Monk. Oh, uh, Jesus. But, um, I guess in terms of, like, dreams that I've had in the past, most of them were like the floppy pigeon dream. When did I start this document? Let me let me see if I can find a date. Where I had like the inside out. Pi- I always had like weird cryptic void dreams with characters that I knew. Created April fifteenth, twenty twenty. It's been three, uh, April. Not quite three. We have a little while till it's three years. But so this is that's a couple months away. This from isn't. Being three ev- years this old. also isn't every dream I have written or every dream I have like I can remember. Like these are the dreams that I remember to write down. It's weird that like I have the mo- I have very somber, like melancholy dreams when I have them. They're not sad, but like it's almost if I could describe my dream as gray. Like it's just very gray. <laughs> it's like no one's saying much of anything. Not a bunch is happening. There's a gray tinge to everything. There's like no color, and I'm just walking around doing things, or I wake up late for work. And then I'll wake up sweating and like breathing really heavy and realize it's four in the morning. Yeah. And I'm like, what the oh, that's, fuck? That's always the worst. Sometimes I'll wake up. Uh, so my alarm, whenever I work, uh, my shift starts at five. So I wake up at four. And sometimes I'll wake up at just like 3.50. And it's like the worst. You're like, it's like, ah. this isn't even enough time for me to go back to sleep and have it matter. I, I do I soak Cause, up cause every minute of sleep. Whenever <laughs> whenever I wake up and and I'm my heart's pumping and shit, I yeah. have to take a I have to take a few minutes to calm down. And so half of those 10 minutes will be spent returning to calm. Yeah. And then two of those 10 minutes will be spent with my eyes closed waiting for sleep to come. I actually have a similar thing 
but it's why I can't have food near my couch or on my couch when I'm sleeping. Because what I'll do is I'll have I'll go to sleep and I'll have a panicked dream where I wake up frantic and then I stress eat all of my food <laughs> and then I'm not tired and I need to go get downstairs and get a drink. Come back upstairs and then my, I'm watching yeah, whatever's then, on my then TV. Then you're awake now, yep. And then I realize I'm like I look over for the first time all morning, it's three in the morning. And I'm like, I have five hours <laughs> until I have to be at work. <laughs> and I can't go back to sleep I used because to, I'm afraid. I kind of, I kind of wish that my shift started later so I could, I could wake up and have some time before I went to work. I the only way to. I could manage to do that is uh, if I if I fell asleep like right as I got home. Yeah. Um, and I used to do that before before I lived with my girlfriend. Um, but now that she's here, all I want to do is, you know, obviously hang out with her and do stuff. Alexi got an Xbox, uh, the, the S, not the, not the mini fridge one, but right before the mini fridge one, the other next gen console. Oh yeah. The very skinny, well, not skinny, bulky, but small Xbox, which is very nice. And we've been playing that. And we oh, built cool. the bonsai tree that Miranda oh, shit. got me. That, That's yeah, cool. Yeah, we built that and it's in her room on a little... TV stand with all the other shit that we built. I'll, I'll be sure to tell her to listen into the podcast. It, I'll be, I'll, I'll, you'll hear Paco's opinion on the Lego set. It looks very, very nice. Yeah. Did Though, you? Which one did you go with? The the normal one or the blooming one? We we have Legos already on her stand. Yeah. Like it's a boxes, and she's filled them in with stuff. And there was one open with a frog, that was green, and uh, a mushroom Minecraft mushroom Lego set. So to go with the natural tone, we went with the green. Oh, nice. But we have prepared the pink. Mm. So that if we decide... You, you, so we you decide have all the pieces it, to switch out. Yes. It, it's Doesn't like it have, like, a shit ton of the frogs? Frogs? Yeah, the, the, the every... A, a lot of the creator, or the, the adult-oriented Lego sets, mm-hmm. they, they have the little frogs. Like, we have an orchid one. I don't know any and frogs. The, the middle the the middle of the flower, the middle of the orchid, the part that, like sticks out the little like feely uh-huh. bits look kind of like antenna the base of that is a frog a little pink frog i need to check if we have frogs <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was, I, there's one of them that has like 99 frogs legos as much as i love building them piss me off because i'm impatient sometimes so a lot of the time me... i'm just like angrily trying to get this together because i love when they're done i yeah. love buying them i love when they're done and they look great but the part in the middle of actually making it, like, because the tree, the tree is very sensitive, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of loose parts, because you fill it with loose Legos. Yeah, that's for the that's, rocks. that's that's what it is for the orchid. And it looks all the dirt at the bottom is just loose bits, loose bits and bobs that we just shove in it, there. It looks very pretty, but, um, we were like the way you do it, it's like you build the bowl, then yeah. you build the tree. You set the tree in the bowl. Then you fill the tree up, you fill the bowl up with the loose bits, and then you add the leaves to the top. Oh, okay. And then you build the stand on the bottom for the bowl. Oh. So, while we were putting the top on, the leaves, mm-hmm. it broke the tree. So I had to rebuild the tree. But I had to oh, rebuild the tree okay. in a stand full of loose parts. <laughs> oh, no. So I was trying to, like, angle it, you know, to try to slide yeah. it into place, and they kept falling out. And I was like, I'm going to spike this tree <laughs> off the wall. Well, you but s- then it went together, and I was like... Oh, that looks so nice. <laughs> I got everything on it. Yeah. And then we built... That's the, always uh, how it works. We built the little wood part that you set the bowl on. Like, it looks so great. <laughs> it's sitting in there and it looks so... It looks so pretty. Especially along with the rest of the stuff there. It fits in perfect. You Wonderful. S- you saw how long it took for me to build the Viking one. It took yeah. me like... Th- it took me like three multi-hour sessions to, to finish the, the Viking one. Because the first one was the night that we all hung out and we drank. Yeah. And then, that was a fun night. Yes. And that, that's how I got this fucking shirt. This, oh, oh my god! You got this shirt! Yeah. I'm so... I wanted... I, 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 I forgot <laughs> that I didn't... Whenever I arrived in the mail, I intentionally did not tell you so Wait I could wear it and show you. Wait a minute. God built me a suck dick! <laughs> and I a forget. Spongebob with a JoJo face. <laughs> I forgot about the shirt. <laughs> oh my god! I thought I saw dick on your shirt whenever we were sitting here. I because oh, yeah, I, I had my arms crossed yeah, whenever we were talking, so I, I had it all covered up. 
Well, that was, we, were, we were playing TKO. That was probably so loud. I was right by the <laughs> mic, but I was trying to get a look at the shirt. <laughs> I have I have the levels fine. It, lo- it looks like even whenever we're loud, it's just barely in the yellow. <laughs> Except for that, <laughs> that really hurt. But yeah, one I of the can't shirts. Fucking believe that one of the shirts we made that made it all the way through was SpongeBob with a JoJo face, and the caption is "God built me to suck dick." Oh it's, my god! It's my drawing and my caption. Someone else put them together, but. I, it was very good. Next time we play this, now that I have money and such, I should I should really order one of them. I think I have a couple of the links saved. If you want to go back at some <sighs> some of the uh, oldie goodies, that'll be really good. I would love to order some of those shirts. Um, but you should probably read off a couple of your dreams. Oh uh, yeah, this, because we're about this, half an hour into the episode, <laughs> and we haven't talked about our actual. That's a, that's dreams. a good. That's a good point. Um, so I'll I'll start with the first dream I have written down. Um, so all these start with had dream. Had dream. Whenever, whenever you wake up, your brain isn't working all the way. So <laughs> that's just the easiest way for my brain to start. Had dream. Had dream. Home, but not home. So this, whenever I say that, it was uh, I'm talking about my dad's house, like the trailer. Yeah. Um, so for some reason, I had a basement. That's like, a strange thing for a trailer. To have. Yes, yes, it is. It had uh, like where the hall. It it was in a place that didn't make sense either, because along the back there is a hallway. Yeah, and the hallway where the entrance to the hallway is just like a staircase that goes down to the basement. But the rest <laughs> so of the hallway can't, still exists. So you can't get into the hallway. Exactly. You have to hop across the stairs. You have to hop across. Okay, um, I can imagine that. So, uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So. <laughs> Had dream, home but not home. So in in this dream, um, it's like storming outside, whenever whenever it starts, and the only person there is my dad, and there's like a, a lady cop who shows up, and my oh, dad shit. is in love with her. <laughs> okay, strange. <laughs> and so and then um, uh, my dad takes me to the basement for something. Oh, and 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 he tells me not to go into a room. And it's like this big, almost like like a labyrinth, and it's like concrete. And I go, and there's in this there's there's a little room off to the side. And it's like huge, and there's a bunch of like <laughs> like recovering drug addict teenagers in there. Like Wait, they're they're having I, like I believe that we have talked about they're, this. They're having before. like an AA meeting. Yeah, they have like the steel chairs and everything. <laughs> And I remember, um, I was like, alright, I don't want to interrupt that. So I went, yeah, and, uh... That's a very reasonable I was, I was walking away, <laughs> and, like, I don't uh, bother them. and in, in the vents, like, through the grate, I could see, like, the face, like, the, the dead face of, like, a, like, a child. And Holy I was shit. like, what the fuck? You I want to get out of here! <laughs> um, so, whenever I go outside, my whole family is there. Like literally everyone, my my dad's side and my mom's side. They're all just we're, we're having out? like a like yeah, cause it's his birthday. Okay, it's okay. my dad's birthday. So, so and it's it, it's a roll. The, so there's, there's a bunch of rolling green hills. Yeah, okay. there's a bunch of rolling green hills. It's all sunny, and then I, I talk to our brother Hunter, um, but then I see another one walk up. <laughs> you see another hunter? <laughs> yeah. Two hunters and two hunters. I can barely stand one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit! So this so, this so, the first one so, that I have written so down. So other hunter. This is a, this is a good way to set the. That's how. That's the last thing I remember. After that, I woke up. This is a Man. good way to set the tone for the dream. The dream <sighs> journal. It's crazy how you see the most unreasonable shit in the dream, but yet have the most reasonable, <laughs> rational thoughts. Where it's like there is a and an whenever meet whenever you're in a dream. You treat the world, no matter how weird it is, like it's normal. Because you walk into your basement that makes no sense with the layout of your home. Yeah. You're told not to go into the, the the drug addict, you know, the rehab room that, for some reason, all of these addicts are just sitting in your basement <laughs> having a meeting, which makes no fucking sense that, you know, the, the basement in the trailer, bunch of random people, the basement dead the kid, tr- people I and, don't know, and you're like, I don't want to bother them. <laughs> they're in your fucking house just having a meeting yeah. and you're like ah you know <laughs> I feel like this could end badly for me yeah, I'm just gonna leave them there 
<laughs> like, that's such a rational thought for such a strange event. Like, they had, like, a table off to the side with, like, <laughs> drinks and stuff, too. They had, uh, uh, uh. I process that as alcoholic. No, 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 no. It's like like punch and stuff. It's like here. Punching cookies. It's like if you have an AA meeting and you just have fucking Jack Daniels (laughs) off to the side. Like, if you guys want to fucking give up, (laughs) here it is. Feel free. But those (laughs) two are sure. Yeah, yeah, you gotta fight me for it. (laughs) (laughs) Three Uh, rounds with me and you can get the Jack Daniels. Chuck Liddell. (laughs) It makes you a man. Chuck Liddell punch drunk 50 years old he's still throwing down I mean he's he'd still murder me can't breathe through his nose yeah he just throws overhand punches until I go unconscious (laughs) he's like I can do this all day the speech impediment punch okay so uh, for this next one uh had dream had dream I, I had an older brother okay I actually have two in this dream well, only one. It, well, only one is there for the whole time. The other one is like off at college. Okay. So okay, that's strange. So, uh, for some context, I am the oldest sibling. Yeah. There is no one before me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm the only one here that only has two older brothers. Yes, but in this dream, I had two older brothers: one who was slightly older than me, and one who was about like four years older than me. That, that's about exactly. This is me. Think about like, you, the, the age gap between me and Hunter is a couple months. The age gap between at, me and you time, is three years. At the time I wrote this, I believe I was still in high school. Yeah. Um, probably at the very end of high school. Right? Uh, oh, actually, I skipped one. Um, so there's a short one uh, right after the dream with uh, the, the basement children. <sighs> Had dream. Uh, I, we were living in an old house. Like a like a like a Tim Burton style, old like broken down haunted house. I would love to live there. Uh, it's still in quarantine, so that that frames that frames the time frame when I had the dream. That's so strange. Tim Burton world. So like it's all black and white, and all the architecture is like gothic and weird. It's awesome. <laughs> Uh, used Transformers relics to make life. I'm not entirely what? sure what that means. <laughs> what? And then it says no parents. <laughs> the, the, world, the world is void of life until you use the Transformers no, 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 no. relics? No, no, no. We use the Transformers relics to create new life. Okay. So, like, everything is still alive and stuff. You're just adding. But we're just adding to it. We're making creatures. That's a nightmare. <laughs> so I back to that. the one where I have older brothers. Yeah, the one with the older brothers. Yes. Uh, our our youngest brother is left at home. Um, oh yes. So in this dream, uh, my mom and stepdad have gone on a vacation. And took you and Hunter. Okay, so me me and Hunter still exist. And then there's two older brothers. Yes. And then Isaac is, I'm assuming, the youngest brother. Yes. So. This is just adding two people to the current yeah, arrangement. Yeah, ad- adding two people to the roster. Which makes your parents a little older. Yeah, I, I would... No, no, no they, had, they, had, they had... much. Yeah, they had me... My my dad was 30 and my mom was 28. So they, they, yeah, they could have fair. feasibly had two children sure. in that time. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, it's really not changing much aside from adding a couple people. Yeah. Um... So yeah, I'm pretty sure that these older child, these older brothers are, like full siblings with me, like Hunter. Okay. Yeah. But I don't, I don't remember for sure. And then me and um, Hunter went with them. Yeah. So you and Hunter go with the parents, and, and go on vacation. So, me, Isaac, the younger older brother, the one that the yeah, one that, that is, is present. In college, yeah. Yes. We decide to go on a road trip. Um, so we, we rent a camper and we go to meet you guys. So you, instead of just because coming on vacation, it's like, no, yeah, it was, it's separate. like a home alone situation. <laughs> okay. So he's, he's driving, I'm co-piloting and Isaac's just hanging out. Yeah. And we're like listening to the radio and stuff. In the dream, it was like the, this older brother was like really cool. He was, he was like, uh, he was kind of like, a. he didn't have like a, like a job or anything, but he was, he was vibing. You know, he was chill. Um, the older brother you wish you had. <laughs> yeah. He was like Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. Not Shaggy 2 Dope. Shaggy from Shaggy Scooby-Doo. Shaggy 2 Dope. <laughs> <laughs> Your fucking Juggalo brother. They're oh, no. Terrible. We have one psychopath. <laughs> 
Uh, so, um, whenever we, whenever we tune into the radio, there's, like, a dude who casually mentions, like, nuclear attacks. <laughs> and it says, on, on our way, we casually talk about nuclear attacks, me and the older brother. Um, and then it says, we fall off a foldy bridge, but are okay. It's like, it's like a, it's like in a video game, whenever you go down a slope, it just kind of thumps around a little bit, but nothing really gets hurt. Okay, yeah, so you're just kind of rolling down the <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And it's just, it's, we're more upset because it's a setback than anything. You're just, your car's floating along and you're waiting to get to shore so you can drive back up and go <laughs> yeah. back. It's like, motherfucker, like, no, we, were, like, we were driving up, we were driving up, uh, like a, a mountain or something, and we fell off of a bridge, and so we had to go from the bottom of the mountain back up to where the bridge was. Okay. And that's the last thing I remember about that one. That ki- part of that, I don't know what it was about it, reminded me, I used to have very, very cryptic dreams when I was younger. That I had no understanding of, no idea where the fuck it came from. The pigeon. But they're stuck in my brain forever. Not even necessarily the pigeon one. That one is strange. With, like, the homeless guy. Yeah, the homeless guy. And it, the, the, the pigeon, like, the, it was inside out, it was flopping around. And then we were in school, but there's a pool in the middle of the floor. <laughs> yeah, and you guys <laughs> didn't you say it was in the library? Yeah, and the pigeon got stuck halfway into the pool, and I was like, I, I was freaking out. And the, the homeless guy reached under and picked up the pool, and I grabbed the pigeon, and then he sent the pool back down. He's like, "Gotcha, kid." And then I woke up. That's like my memory of that is dwindling because of how long ago I had that dream. I love that but sage I'll, homeless I'll, man. I'll never forget about the homeless guy that helped the inside out pigeon out from under <laughs> the I'll pool. never forget about him. <laughs> I'll never forget him. He looked, uh... <sighs> he looked like Benedict Cumberbatch. But like homeless? But really shitty. Like Benedict Cumberbatch from the beginning of Doctor <laughs> Strange? <laughs> yeah. After 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 he breaks his hands, it becomes washed up. That's the best way I could describe what a the bearded, homeless man looked Bearded, like. disheveled Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, he wasn't like a bad homeless, but he looked homeless. Like he yeah. looked uh, unkempt, but not un- un- like not 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 crazy. Yeah, not bad, just not. Like like groomed. he had seen better days. Yes. All and right. Expl- but the one there was this one I remember me and my dad. We're hiking up this, like, mountain. Uh-huh. And it was, like, um, like a plateau at the top, but there was a trail that went circular around it. It's like, like, it, it's it's, like Mount Chiliad. Yeah, like, you walked in a circle around the width of the mountain, slowly spiraling, spiraling up. up to the top where it's Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we were walking, and um, I had to tie my shoe. And I sat down, and it was really hot. Like, the ground was really hot, and I was tying my shoe. And my dad kind of just kept walking. Uh Uh-huh. And something pushed me off the side of the mountain. Oh, my God. And I fell for a while. And then I stopped falling. You just... It's almost like I didn't hit the ground. Like, you motion paused? It almost felt like someone grabbed me by the back of the shirt. And I just went like... Oh, okay. And I was just sitting there. Then I woke up. Did it hurt whenever you were falling? And, like, tumbling? No. Like, it, it felt... I felt like... Is it like it you were under like, anesthesia? Like you felt the impacts, but you didn't feel the pain. I well, the thing is, my my fall was just like I was pushed and I was plummeting through air. Oh. I, 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 did, I didn't feel air touching me. Like I could see that I was, but it didn't yeah. feel like air. And then all of a sudden, I stopped falling. Like I had been like 30, 40 feet up from the ground. And then I woke up and I was like, "What the fuck did that mean?" And that was the same <laughs> night what is when this? I went, when I went back to sleep. That I was on top of that mountain, and uh, sh- I feel like I feel like there was a name to it. it might have been Cyborg. Mount Cyborg. No, uh, no, yeah, the, not the mountain, but I think Cyborg from Teen Titans. Some along those lines, his he was in a jeep, and his arm. Oh, like, I cut think off. I, I think I remember this. And it was like def- like a funny balloon to fly. Like it was like. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, he and, talk, and he talks about but you betraying and, and him, he right? About him, but he's like, I will never forgive you. Yeah, I remember this. And then I woke up again, and it freaked me out really bad. I remember you telling me about Cyborg being upset at you. He I, was, don't, he was I don't think he told me about the rest of it. I believe that I, I, I cannot fully remember. But that's really funny. But I do I'll, remember. I'll never forgive you! I, 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 it was like whenever Spongebob got his uh, muscle arms poked. <laughs> And like it kind of flopped yeah. around, and you could see the 
the tear in it where yeah. I was like flopping through. I was like that. that? That's what his arm looked like. <laughs> and it, I think I think I had shut. I got out of the jeep. I was in the back of the jeep. I got out of yeah. the jeep, and I closed the door. Like, like he drove you up there. Yeah, and he was getting out, and I closed the door on him by accident, and it caught his arm, and it ripped it off, <laughs> and then his arm deflated, and he was really angry about it. That's hilarious. And my dad was talking to me about. Not being rude or something along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> he was there at the top of the mountain, but separately from me. Oh, okay. But um, that was one of those dreams that stuck with me for ever, and I don't, <laughs> I don't know where any of that came from. When I told Nana about it, she said maybe like God caught you, maybe it was him talking to you. And I'm like, I don't think that's what it was. <laughs> I was like, I think I'm just uh, tired and I need to go back to bed. But. Uh, that was one of the strangest ones I ever had. You got any other ones that you, that you can remember? <sighs> While we're on the on the topic of your weird dreams, um, I, re- I really love I really love how there's just people who show up in your dreams and they just have unreasonable responses, like the homeless <laughs> man with the gotcha kid. Yeah, and then, I know. And then that. cyborg cyborg is just upset at you for deflating his arm. Suppose, uh, uh, assumingly, I don't imagine you know he would be mad at you for anything else. Majority of what I remember from my dreams are strange shit that they said, and then the rest of it will piece itself together as I recollect what they said. Yes, yeah, so I, like, I understand what you mean. Like I remember him saying, "I'll never forgive you," but then my brain kind of connects why he said that. And yeah, then as, it, as as you're talking about it, you get the memory. I start of to it. see it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <sighs> the whole floppy pigeon thing was a, was fucking wild. It was a saga, right? There, were, like, a there were a couple. I think it's because when I had the first one, it was so. W- it was from an Adventure Time thing. Yeah, where the, the Magic, the Magic Man, Man, turns, Man the turns the bird inside out, and, and, that, and Jake is just like shaking and traumatized after he sees that. So that's that's where the I think my idea of the pigeon came from, and then the fact that we talked about it so often after made me yeah, dream was, about it more. Because that that was just like a really fucked up weird scene to have a kid show. <laughs> It was fucked. I don't know why they put that in it tries, there. It flops around and it tries to fly, but it can't because the feathers are on the inside. That's what it did in my dream the whole time. Yeah. And I was, like, chasing it through things. <laughs> this, this disturbed creature. Like, I remember... I'm trying to piece it together, but this is after... That was prob- this is a this while is after years my- ago. This is a while ago that you had this dream. This whole saga is a long time ago, and this particular dream had to have been, like, a month... That You know, like, a, some span of time after my initial dream about the pigeon, but I remember... I was... In- we were in my room. Mm-hmm. We were in our room that we shared amongst the three of us, and I woke up and everyone was gone. Like oh. it, it was, like, daylight outside... You guys weren't in the room. Isaac's bed wasn't in the corner. It's like he wasn't even there. Yeah, I'm assuming he didn't exist. So I sat up on my bed and I looked around and all the shit that I knew was there wasn't there. I like you know the little we had the little stand at the foot of my bed and on top of it was all the Grand Theft Auto cheat code papers. Yes. And um, then I knew. Oh, so that's whenever we had the big TV in the room. Yeah, so the big TV should be there. There should be a little stand with the PS3 on it. None of that shit was and, and, there. And the uh, the the old crunchy ass laptop that we had. Oh, that thing. I tried to play Surgeon Simulator one time. It wouldn't load right. But it was Kevin's just having <laughs> Kevin's having a fucking fit. I, I can't... <laughs> My guinea pig's choking. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. He does that. It sounded he, like a fart. He just goes. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah. They just do that? He's, I think he's just regurgitating his food back up. Oh, okay. That's cool. He's a healthy guy. He's been doing that. The vet I took him to said it was okay. But, um... <laughs> but I was looking around, and you guys weren't there, which was strange, because usually I woke up early. Yeah. Like, usually I woke up at least the first time before I went back to sleep, and I saw you guys there. Mm-hmm. But it was like, it looked like daylight, and I looked outside, and it looked normal. Like, the early learning center was there. Mm-hmm. And my friend, I remember my friends being outside. Like I wanted to go play with them. Yeah. And that's when I started leaving the room. Like I probably like Dalen, Devonte, or whatever. They were all outside. So I stood up and ignored all the shit that was wrong with the room. Like our TV mm-hmm. wasn't there. And the absence of the boy. The, the the fact that Isaac didn't exist. Yeah. His bed wasn't even over there in the corner. Like that little the bed little race car they, bed they, they used yeah. to be mine. Um. But I so I leave outside of my room. Like I open the door, I step out. And it's just like a big open space. 
Yeah. Like a big open room, which is not how the no. house was. The house was immediately like our there's, parents' there's a room, parents' and room, then Nana's, Nana's room, room, and the bathroom. bathroom. So like, I step out there, and the vent that I usually would step on every time leaving my room, yeah, wasn't there. And I kept walking because it was like dark in there, and I realized this is, just, this is just a vast space. Like I'm just walking on the floor, and I don't see any walls. I just keep walking. Oh my god! And then I see like a little. I think I run into a wall, and there's a door. And I open the door, I walk out, and I'm outside with my friends. And I see the pigeon in the playground across the street from where yeah. we lived. Yeah, yeah. And so I kind of walked past them, and I cl- I hopped over the little fence that, were, that was there. And as I kept walking towards it, it kept flopping away at like a the <laughs> equal speed to what I'm doing. So as I ran, it would speed up. As I slowed down, it would slow down. Okay. And eventually... Like, as I was chasing it, Nana was sitting on a bench. I, I had been chasing it in my dream for, like, hours. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long I had actually been, you know, asleep, but I had been chasing that fucking thing forever. And I, as I was running, I realized I was kind of lost. And I saw Nana on the bench, and I ran over to it. And then sitting beside Nana on the bench was the fucking pigeon. <laughs> and I, I don't remember the rest of the dream... But I remember her indifference scared me. Like just her she, being used to it? She was just so, like, unfazed by the pigeon. Uh, I was scr- I was scared and, like, crying because I was lost. Yeah. She didn't give a fuck. She was like, oh, I mean, I'm right here. I'm like, I know, but where are we? And the <laughs> pigeon was there. And I'm like, what about him? And she was like, yeah, he's, you know. It, he's hanging out. He's, he's there. I, <laughs> it, like, I don't remember what happened. I, I might have woken up. I'm not sure. It's so long ago. But I remember chasing the fucking thing, and then her indifference scaring me. Yeah. And then I, I don't remember the rest of it. There are probably <laughs> details I'm missing out of, but just the chase, and then the scare. Like, because Nana's not a very you, indifferent you just, person. You just wanted to hang out next to Nana. Yeah, Nana is a, a passionately happy person. Yeah. Like, she's always being positive and happy and loving. Mm-hmm. So her sheer indifference, like, I was freaking out and upset. She did not care. She didn't offer me a hug. She didn't say it's okay. She wasn't getting rid of the thing that was scaring me as Nana would have done when I was yeah. younger. She was like, you're going to have to fucking deal with it. I mean, I don't know where we're at. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know where we're at. I don't care that you're upset, and I don't care that this thing's here. And it scared the shit out of me, and I woke up, and I was angry at her all day. <laughs> she had no idea why. <laughs> I would. She offered me butterscotches. I wouldn't fucking take them. Like, keep your... No! Like, keep your fucking butterscotches. <laughs> prune you wouldn't even take care of me I was, I, was, I was afraid you left me by that pigeon you were just sitting there with him you were conspiring little, against little me little 10 year old Paco <laughs> you were conspiring against me with this pigeon <laughs> this pigeon doesn't have wings I remember trying to explain it to her and she had no idea what I was talking about we were on the back porch and she was smoking and you guys were swimming and I got out and I was like she's like why are you so mad with me like I wasn't talking to her Yeah. And she's like why are you so upset and I was drying off and I was like, because you left me, in my dream, you left me by this pigeon, he was inside out, I was lost, and he was scary, and you didn't care. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh yeah, because uh, we had that little, uh, <laughs> on the, we had a little tiny back deck with the sliding doors. Yeah, and that's where Nana would always sit, there's like a chair there, and then it led straight out. I just got like a fucking massive slap of nostalgia thinking about that house. Thinking about that house, every Looking time with I- the living room right beside it, where we would watch Danger Dolan and like Good Mythical Morning all the oh time. Oh my god. Yeah, sitting in that... We would we had a tradition where at midnight, we would gather in the living room, Paco and I. We'd, we'd get cozy, we'd get snacks, and we'd watch Good Mythical Morning it, into it, the wee it, hours of the day. It depends. It could have been Good Mythical Morning. We used to do the same thing with Danger Dolan. Uh, same thing with uh, Lost Tapes. Oh, dude! The, the scary, the spook, the spooks, man. We'd sit there and have like popcorn or whatever, you know, whatever. Or we'd, 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 we'd watch uh, those old like ghost videos. The shitty fucking ghost. Vi- the, we'd be scared like shitless. Like the, the Japanese woman in the hospital with the meat man. Dude, we'd be scared. We'd be <laughs> yeah. sitting. Cause we'd get on the love seat together and just like have like pillows built up around us. Yeah. And we're like. <sighs> Sometimes I remember sitting <laughs> like uh, whenever the the parents would go out for something, I would I would, I would <laughs> sit down and watch scary shit. I would sit there with like a knife beside me just in case. <laughs> I remember. I remember that. I, dude. I mean, like, or like, um, 
hanging out at the computer. Because we'd sit, uh, one of us would like be pl- usually you were playing, and I'd be sitting on the, um, I think we had an ottoman that was in there that I'd sit on. Or like a dining room chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd sit there and watch you play. Or, um, we used to play a pocket edition Minecraft on our Kindles. Yeah. While the parents were watching, like, Pawn Stars and stuff. I remember sitting on the love seat with my legs up. Uh, uh, whenever it was under the window. Yeah. And then the TV was right over there. Yeah, like, the window was, like, right behind you, and it leads the, the, into, like, a... Uh, another thing is the TV in that old house. The TV is the same, um, it was a, it was almost the same TV that we had upstairs in our little room. But it was a, it was a big box TV that had this, it was resting on its speakers. And it was, like, a little, uh, I don't know how to describe it's it. It's still in the basement. Oh, yeah. That's the same TV. But, um, uh, I'm talking about, like, the windows. Like, the, how, the structure of the house. Like, it goes out a little bit, and there's windows behind the TV, windows angled to the sides of the TV. Yeah, it's almost like And that a, was another creep factor whenever I would sit there and I would watch spooky videos. Because the windows are right there. Yeah. And there's street lights, so if a shadow passes through, was Joe's house. you can see it. <laughs> yeah, and Joe's right there. <laughs> Creepy as shit. I don't like that. That guy scared me. I still have the stories about his campfire. Oh, that yeah. That bonfire in his backyard. Oh, yeah, the, the people, people around the it. The marching and the scare. I was uncomfortable. It was wild. Dude, I mean, just thinking about that house. Like, remember when we used to go up into the attic as, like, an adventure? And there was just, squirrels up there Yeah, and just shit. see what was going on. <laughs> I found, like, my dad's old, it's like, like, a broken-ass from- window. Yeah, <laughs> fucking window. Or, like, all the, um, the sheets of plastic that covered the window holes so yeah. you wouldn't die. Man. Or, like, um... I was, every how t- fucked up I that was sidewalk always, was? I was like, oh, yes. Yeah, that was some fucked up sidewalk. In that driveway, we had the rendezvous. Because what we had, we had those little... So the way it worked was we had we had a porch, right? Yeah, we had a porch. And then there was like a little set of stairs that went down to the sidewalk, right? It, yeah, there were stairs going there was down. A, there was some lawn, and then it, it went had a little drop-off to the sidewalk. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted yeah, to make it, sure I'm remembering that the right. The way I'm thinking of it, there's stairs from the porch down to the lawn. And like I think there might have been concrete there. The, I think there was just like a two or three like panels... Yeah. And then the stairs, and then to stairs the down to the actual sidewalk. Yeah. And the stairs down to the sidewalk were accompanied by, like, just... It almost looks like a rolling little hill of lawn that yeah. angled down into the sidewalk and stuff. And I used to sit down there, and we had uh, that one play thing for a little bit. But, um... Oh, yeah. We just do stupid We were all too shit. big on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd play... And play with like toys and shit on the stairs. I'm like this is cool as fuck, dude. And they're like, um, that was fun. Different was days. Crazy. Thinking about, thinking about sitting on that couch. You know one of the things I remember doing when I was there. What was that very early in my life? I was very very young. I remember we had. I don't know if we still had it when you guys came around. This is might have been a little bit later. I mean a little bit earlier. But we had um, this chair, and it was brown, and it was like studded along the sides. I think I remember. It wasn't like pointy or anything, but like it was yeah. like it was like buttons almost mm-hmm. going down the so- the hard part of the chair, and then they were soft. Uh huh. Normal shit. I remember going behind that chair and shitting myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember how you you. I don't remember how, how, how old, old would you have been? Because I remember the youngest. Like, the youngest I was when we moved there, I was a couple years old. We lived on Seneca, you w- and then we moved from I, Seneca to... I think to you definitely... Because you would have... You would you probably would have been, like, four or five. Probably. So that's definitely too old to just shit yourself behind the chair. <laughs> I think that I was upset. Oh, okay, you did it in anger. I think I did it out of spice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you clean my shitty underwear. Yeah, clean me, fucker. I think that's what it was. <laughs> Uh, because, like, oh, you got, we, I think I we, dream about that house sometimes. I'm trying to remember. The, the farther I think back, the more I realize some of the things I associated with High Street were actually on Seneca Street. Because the houses are I, I both, don't remember. I don't remember Seneca. I, don't I remember know, did, High Were you Street. there? Maybe once or twice. My mom tells me that I went to see her there a few times. I don't remember it at all. Because... I lived in a couple houses, and both of them were very similar. 
but Seneca had slight, like, you know how, um, in, on High Street, there was the living room and then the dining room, they're connected? Yes. And there was no doors. Yeah, there were the, 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 the big flat ones that were always, uh, withdrawn. Yeah. The same thing was in Seneca Street without those doors. Oh. They weren't an option there. So, it, it was very similar whenever I think back on it. But I remember, like, you'd walk in and there'd be a living room and my, there was, like, a bed there. And that was the difference whenever I tried to think back. Because I'd be sitting there, I remember I'd, like, wake up, and my dad would be watching ESPN. And then right around the corner from his bed in the living room was a set of stairs and the door. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, a split. Like, there was, it was a two, like there was two houses there. But I remember vividly see, thinking Nana was coming home. Turning around saying I love you, and then it was Sonya, and I felt awkward because she we had just met her. Yeah, and I don't know if she remembers it, but I do very <laughs> vividly, and it embarrassed me really. You bad. always remember just like the the most awkward shit. Every once in a while, whenever I'm feeling good about myself, I'll just remember this one awkward thing I did like years ago. Yeah, and I'll just be like, because like why did I do that? I had met her like twice. Yeah, she had come over and seen my dad. I hadn't met any of you guys yet. I remember. Seeing you guys for the first time, but I do not remember any interaction after that. I remember. I remember. I know what it looked. I don't know how to explain. It. I know what it looked like remember, when Nana came in. I remember like when Nana came home. I remember what it looked like to see her walk in the door, but no specific events. The first memory I have of you is the house on High Street, because I think my mom was showing me the house, like uh, where all of our beds and stuff would be. And uh, and I remember. Uh, Talking to you and seeing you. But that's like my first memory of you in my brain. I feel like I, I remember that seeing... I can recollect. I, I probably met you before that. It's just I don't remember it. I feel like... I feel like I had to have seen you on Seneca once. Because I remember seeing Sonya walk in. And she, always, she had like a pattern. Because when I was little I'd focus on this because I had nothing else going on. Like, she'd walk in, and she wouldn't look. She'd just close the door behind her. Like she'd walk in, grab the knob, toss mm-hmm. it shut. And this time, I remember her not doing that. She walked in, and she turned around and looked outside. And then two things came in. And I don't remember any of the Old interactions. So I remember that, like, the change <clears throat> in the daily normality that I had. Or, like, um... But the more I think about the difference between the houses, I can realize what the differences were. Because on High Street, when you walked in, there was the coat rack and the wine rack that we never used. Then the basement door, then kitchen. Uh Uh-huh. And then on Seneca, it was a completely different layout. But, like, remember having to sit on those fucking stairs? And how angry... In front of the house? No. Oh, no, yes! We got put on the stairs, like, the upstairs stairs. Oh, yes! Uh, I remember that. And some of us, sometimes, sometimes they'd put all three of us up there, and we just had to sit there in spite. We'd just shoot the shit, and they'd be like, if you guys don't shut up, I'm getting the spoon out. And we're like, fuck. We'd sit there, like, (laughs) mad. I'd be holding the the rails like a prisoner. White knuckling. Looking out. Sometimes I'd like look at the top of the coat rack and see what's up there, and it was all like electrical tape. And you remember box looking cutters. at like old like uh, Transformers animated figures <laughs> online <laughs> on our old on our old ass PC? Dude, yes I do. I remember that shit so like Toy it's Wiz. stuck in my brain. Toy Wiz. Yep. Wow, Toy Wiz. <laughs> Holy shit, <laughs> that just hit something in my brain. Toy Wiz, I haven't thought about that in so long. Nude. Nowadays, uh, if I if I if I'm ever out at like the exchange or something uh-huh. out in the wild, and I see a Transformers animated figure, I'm grabbing that shit. It's I mean it's great. Yeah, Isn't it's, it, crazy? It, it, it has such a such a such a warm place in my memory. I love. Do you remember whenever I, I think you were there? We went to the exchange once, and in the dollar bin, there was a Transformers animated Ironhide. Yes. And I, I was like, vi- yeah. this is, like, intact and everything. Remember what the fuck? They have the, they brought, there was, okay, they used to always have the dollar bin, and it was huge. Yes. Then they stopped. Uh-huh. Under new management, they stopped doing it. You that. think it was stuff like that? But guess what? What? I think, well, I think they stopped doing that because they kept underselling shit they could sell. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like that. But. The Ironhide. It's back. It's back. Whenever I go, I haven't looked into it very deep. 
because usually I, go I, there I for need a to go back. Thing. I want to go back to the exchange. Me and Lexi sometime. go there all the time. The one, the one um, in Canton, not the one in Belden. There's one that's not too far from the rallies. That's the one I We've, almost got shot at. Yes, yeah. that one has some exquisite figures. They in have it. cool stuff there. It's just scary. I saw a Transformers animated Waspinator in there once, and I remember because I I had already bought like a, a mint on box first edition Transformers Prime Bumblebee, uh-huh. and then the Dragon Ball Super Broly figure there. The Broly figure was like fifteen bucks. It was not bad. Those things can wow. Those things can go wild in price. Yes. But my point is, I didn't snag it because I had already spent too much money there. What a puss. Uh, <laughs> every, every time I go to the exchange, there's something in particular I'm getting. So I don't spend as much time looking because I'm just for, buying I'm the al- thing. I'm always there to look around. Like I go there like, oh, I don't... Because uh, they always have like nice, cool shit. They have a bunch of cool shit. Cool, yeah. cool shit that you can't find online well, recently anymore. Recently, it was like... We went in there and like I got eBay. A, I went in there and I got a PSP. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going in there and getting PSP shit that I need. Yeah. As I realize what I need, and then um, uh, like so, like Lexi went in there for a controller for Xbox, which he found very cheap. They had twenty five dollar Xbox One controller and it was perfect. Condition. Yeah, there you go. That's nice. But like, as I started going in there more, I found all those UFC DVDs. And then I'll keep looking. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I'll see s- the price cards. I'll see like a really cool one. I'm like, fuck, I have to get it. Like, the, like I found last time I was there, I found the Leota Machida and Shogun Hua one. I'm like, Leota Machida. Like, I gotta <laughs> fucking get that one. I remember one of my earliest memories with UFC was I was playing with uh, the UFC figures I had on that, like, chain table. That weird link table, you know, on the front porch. It was red oh, and yeah. black. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. And I was... And it, it had a bunch of, like, rusted away parts. Yeah. And the chairs matched and they'd rock. Remember the yard sale? The yard sale? We had a yard sale. Yeah, because we wanted to get money. Yeah, we needed money, like, desperately. <laughs> so we had a yard sale, and I just, like, gave, I gave up an unreasonable amount of toys in that. I like, think I remember that, and I remember only wanting to give up, like, two or three things. So, like, anything you don't use, just put out there. And my little brain was like, oh, I get, I get money. And then we didn't get any money. But <laughs> I, like, I give, like, 30 figures, and they're like, are you sure you're gonna give this up? I'm like, I'll do anything for money. I mean, whatever. <laughs> My little brain was always on the hustle, too. I mean, I was yeah. making money. And um, I regret... I regret giving a lot of my shit to the exchange. Like, that Grey Hulk that we had. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, nah, I just... I Now that I am more of a comic book fan probably than ever, I, I think back, that, that Grey Hulk figure wasn't great, but I could have put in the time to make it great, if yeah. that makes any sense. Dude, I mean... There's a period of time where I had an ungodly amount of wrestling figures. Yeah. And moving around, I lost I lost some. I probably lost... I probably had hundreds. Uh-huh. Probably, like, close to 200 We vandalized figures. at least 20. Yeah. But I, over... He's over, up there. <laughs> he's right Festus. there. He's looking at me. <laughs> Festus and one-armed Wolvie. But, like, as I moved around with my mom, because the whole rough patch where he moving around doing shit and being homeless, I lost a couple. I probably lost 20. But then I gave a bunch to my brothers, and they didn't take as close count as how many... Like, I'd count them. Mm-hmm. If I brought ten to my mom's, I counted before I came back that I had ten. Yeah. And I Because they're super I, important to you. I had, I had some there, so if I didn't have the ten I brought, I'd just grab other ones to replace. I had... It was my Raw and SmackDown. When I was here, I had my Raw figures, and there were like 50 of them. Went there, and I had like 75 SmackDown figures in my brain. Uh-huh. So if I had to, and I like I brought ten raw ones over, I'm like shit. I only have eight. I'll scrap two SmackDown guys and transfer them brands, because I had a very creative little brain mm-hmm. that had different rings, one there, one here. Mm-hmm. But as I gave them away to my brothers, and sold a bunch to the exchange, and now I'm like, I wish I would have fucking kept those, <laughs> every single one of them, because you know, how cool. I'm not even a wrestling fan really anymore. I don't mess with them a lot. I still collect some if I have... See ones I didn't get when I was younger? Yeah. But, dude, you know how fucking cool it would be to see the generations of figures I had? Yeah. Just, like, have I them on the so, shelf or something. So many, like, obscure ones that are probably rare. X-Pac. Like that, like that Yoshitatsu I had. Yes! 
No one knows who Yoshitatsu you had, is anymore. You had two. He was a perfect... You, you had two so we could call him Yoshi, and then we had Toshi. Yeah, yeah, Yoshitatsu, he was the elite, and then Toshitatsu was the, was the, basic. the basic. And, uh, but like, those ones are cool, because they're not popular, they're not known anymore. And I would have had two fine figures of them. Now all I have are in this box. Oh! All the ones I have. Yeah, I got Brock Lesnar right on the top. Bork. Bork laser right there. I know that the... The Mattel has stepped up their game because now they have like interchangeable hands. This is classic yeah. Brock Lesnar too. Yeah, I found him. Yeah, that's sick. But um, Double man, elbows. I don't think nice. there's a podcast out there that's worse at keeping on top. of the <laughs> We started oh, off. Okay. We started off with dreams, and now I'm playing with action figures. This this, <laughs> this this makes me think of how like crazy we used to make Brock Lesnar in our uh whenever we would play with action figures. Yeah. <laughs> Brock Lesnar was the fucking, fucking like powerhouse. He'd be tweaking out, just like fighting Screaming. the Hulk and shit. Yeah, he'd be the he'd fight the Hulk. Man, we were because we gave well, the wrestlers superpowers. I think this wood with barbed wire is one of the oldest things I have in there right now. Oh yeah, I got that so because that was ago. the accessory set. That accessory like set the, was the coolest shit I ever. The barbed got. wire baseball bat that was so cool when I got it. Because I'm like, I'd always pretended I had the. Accessories, but now I finally did. Cause a lot of these guys aren't very old. I mean, like, did, did the Brock Lesnar come with like interchangeable hands? Uh, he might have. Is that the Ultimate Warrior? Yeah, we painted him. The remember, Ultimate remember, Warrior. Remember when they were going on the painting craze when he started painting figures and I started painting mine? Oh yeah, I see that. I see because it was he was originally yellow. Yes. Yes. All right. Yellow and green. But uh, then, like, my Sergeant Slaughter's kind of old, too. Oh, I remember. Yeah, that, I remember that Sergeant Slaughter. And then, um... He's still... The joints are still, like, really tight. That surprises me. I got the Seth Rollins, which I thought was really cool, too. Oh, but, yeah. But I remember... Do you remember sometimes... Because the whole family would go to the video store. To family video. Yes. And we... Dude, each of recently the brothers, I've been having a lot of nostalgia for old video stores. Yeah. I, I miss that. I, I, dude, I would love to, Remember whenever they finally added, like, a Marcos beside it and you could order a pizza? Yeah! Pizza but and we never did because we, never we were did. dirt poor. <laughs> yeah. But, um, the three of us used to each get, we each rent one video, like, one movie or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the parents would. And the parents would watch it in the living room. We'd watch it on the dining room. We'd have the movie we'd, boxes. We'd have movie boxes and we'd set out the blanket. Yes! And we'd bring our That's toys in. That's how we in. first watched Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, we'd bring our toys in and, you know, play separately or together when we got bored of the movie. But I remember one time, I had just gotten the the green and black Rey Mysterio. That came yeah. with the addable mask. Uh -huh. That you put on top of the mask. And I was so fucking excited. And then the, it was the best week of my life. I got that. The next day, we went to the fucking video store. And I got Beavis and Butthead. And, I'm surprised uh, that that paint has held up. Holy shit. Yeah. So it doesn't like smearing or anything. Nope, it's fine. Wow. But I remember that. I was like, I was so happy. I was playing with my new action figures. Fucking watching the movie I rented. I was having so much fun. Things like that. Or I like, remember later on, once we got our own hmm. TVs in our room. Um, we'd each be watching separately on our own TVs, mm -hmm. and we'd have, like, our snacks, and we're having, like, these flavored tortilla chips. <laughs> now that family video is a fucking urgent care. It's an urgent care and, and a, a Domino's. Domino's. They're still, I like how they made it from Marco's, from one pizza shop to another, just turned it into Domino's. And you know what the fucking thing is, too? Huh. Whenever we went to Cedar Point, uh, me, Miranda, and a couple of our other friends, we went to Cedar Point, um, is in, in the, in September... No, yeah, it was, no, it was October. It was, like, really late in the year. Um, but we got, we got Marco's Pizza while we were there. Uh -huh. And, uh, it was, like, really good. We watched Shin Godzilla. We had a great time. Remember Nana stayed in that apartment? Oh, that's Xbox. Yeah, I had my Xbox. In my, oh, wow! Xbox and CM Punk. They're very MC fucking, Spunky. He's they're all fucked up. Yeah, we <laughs> fucked him up pretty good. But I had Marco's twice. Uh, when Nana lived in that apartment with the really tall ceilings... Oh yeah, we, with the, we watched the, the, the steep together. ass, the, the steep ass uh, driveway, right across. It was right by the uh, gas station, right by the marathon, right across from the Rite Aid. Yeah, right by the Salvation mm -hmm. Army. Uh, yeah, we uh, we watched me, uh, me and Nana watched Pulp Fiction there. We were way too young to have watched that movie. Yeah, and she was. She probably shouldn't have watched it either. Uh, but <laughs> we went to Aldi's and she got us each of like a bag of chips and we went and fucking. God. First off. 
every time we went to Nana's, that was the best time ever. Yeah, we'd sit there and watch whatever we wanted, eat whatever we wanted. She'd take us wherever. And she had the kinetic sand. Yeah, and I had the the monster trucks. I'd run through it, but I remember me and her were like, we should try the Marcos place. She's like, okay. Most violent diarrhea I've ever had in my fucking <laughs> life. Dude, I ate that shit and it was oh. good, but I was like puking out of both sides. That's what, it wasn't like it wasn't like peeing. It was like vomiting. That was actually sides. um the our trip to Cedar Point was one of the first times I had hung out with Peyton. Like in person. I don't know him very well. Interesting fellow. He, and then he's I'll, very pretty. Yeah. And we should have him on sometime. It'll be fun. I could get to know him. Before he... Because mo- he's going to move out to California here in a, the next couple of months. He seems like a... One of them snowflakes. Yeah, he seems like one of them. <laughs> but, uh... Uh, yeah, I want to have him on before before he moves. Uh, but anyways, yeah, about he, Is he going to be homeless there? No. He's, he's, he's... He showed us pictures of the apartment he's been checking out. It's not in one of the more super populated areas. That's probably for the better. Yeah, it's in one of the. It's it's far away from like L.A. and shit. Uh, one thing I didn't realize: it's California like, is a fucking huge place. Yeah, he's like he's in San Diego, and I'm like no, no, no. <laughs> it's, no, it's it's in a nice it's little San Francisco, I'm nice like, little area. Get, he's like Sacramento. I'm moving to Sacramento. <laughs> you're gonna get raped. Don't do that. <laughs> But he he showed us a, a, the apartment that he plans on moving in, and it is the smallest apartment I think I have ever seen. <laughs> hey man, if you're chasing, if you the, can make it what work. What is there for him? He, what, no, what is he, he going it's, for? It's a stepping stone between that and Japan, because he wants that's what, that's his end goal. He studied for a year in Japan. He's knowledgeable on the language. He knows how to read it and everything. Um, he just wants to live in Japan. He likes the place. It's not even just like a weeaboo thing. He just likes Japan. Yeah, he just likes Japan. I mean, you know, I guess California. I don't really. Oh, uh, it's, it's it's closer easier to Japan. yeah, it's closer. Yeah. Gonna, you could just move to Japan. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna go across I, country I think, to leave the country, the, you could just leave the country. I think he just doesn't want to fuck himself up too quickly. He's moving to California. <laughs> He's fucking it up already, yeah. but. In pursuit of happiness and passion, yeah, it's 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 a stepping stone. You can fuck up stone. as much as you want. It's a stepping stone on his way to to happiness, Absolutely. to glory. If and he... then once he lives in Japan, I have an excuse to go there myself. You know what we should do? And see, like me, me and you need to save up and plan a trip to the most outlandish fucking place, Australia. Let's go to like the. Netherlands. I'd be afraid to die in Australia. Let's go to Australia. You sh- we should go somewhere nice. Somewhere Let's nice go to Britain. with a lot of English speakers. Let's go to Britain. Oi, bruv! Dude. What the fuck? Fucking tourists, mate! We, no, we can go to Liverpool. They're sweet. They're cool Liverpool. as shit there. A bunch of, bunch of scousers. They walk in, there's a bunch of ancient buildings, and they're like, oh, I would love to. What he's doing? For real, though? I would love to go to Britain. Fucking uh, absolutely. The history there. Ireland is one of the ones I really want to. Oh, yes! Like, how pretty my, the fucking I, place is. I, I think I've oh, talked about goodness. this before, but, like, my, my dad. His mom, my my grandma's dad, mm-hmm. off the boat Irish. So I am like, Just think about like an eighth Irish, straight. So I I would definitely like to go there sometime. Just I mean, because I think that's something that my dad always wanted to do, but he never got the chance. Like it, you see like pictures of it of certain he, areas. And he always and he so always pretty. held he always held his Irish heritage with pride. Anytime it was St. Patrick's Day. He was drinking that green beer, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> and my my grandma would also celebrate by making Irish foods, and that was always really fun. Irish foods are fucking bang. Irish you know foods what I wanna are do? great. I want to go to a pub. Oh yes! I want to eat whatever they're eating. I want to drink whatever go they're drinking. Go to the drinking. pub. <laughs> I want to hang out. I want to be one of them. I want to hang out and fight people. It sounds Listen wonderful. to the cranberries. That's fine. <laughs> they're from Ireland. That's fine. I, I, What's in your head? I would love to just. I don't know. Explore. I like Europe a lot. I want to see what's going on there. And if you uh, Germany and like Switzerland, uh, I know that I'm, they're scary. <laughs> I hate Germany. <laughs> <laughs> they're all they're really clean, and they have a lot of English speakers there. I'm scared of Germans. <laughs> they're loud and mean. My girlfriend's from German heritage. And she's mean. Bite. She's mean too. <laughs> <laughs> she bullies me. And to, to, listen, if you have a girlfriend and she doesn't bully you, bully you, you should be worried. 
Yeah, because she's going to kill you eventually. Yeah, she's going to kill you. She's going to take it out on you daily. She's going to take it out <laughs> once in a It's going to build bit. up, and you are going to die, or she's going to leave you? Miss Benoit. That's what it's going to be. Yes. But, uh, yeah, my... I'm not sure if I remember this fully correctly, but my my girlfriend's grandma, I think her last name is Claus. Until she got married, it was Claus. Mm. And, uh... Oh, that was really funny whenever I learned it, because... <laughs> like Santa. She was a she was a nurse, so people would call her Miss a lot. Miss Claus. She'd Miss Claus. But, uh... Ha <laughs> ha, Tim Allen! <laughs> 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 You're Tim Allen! But now their last name's Trump, which voted... Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> more welcome in Ohio. she get discounts on, like, her cat? She got her cat for cheaper, because the, the shelter was, like, Trump supporters. Oh, wow. She's like, I have no relation, but, you know, thanks, I guess. Shrug. <laughs> okay. Um, but back to dreams. <laughs> Man, we really got fucking out there. No, that was a fun detour. I like talking about stuff like I that. I always love the nostalgia talks. They make yeah. me happy. And, and we're getting that out there. One of the major ideas that I wanted to do the podcast for was so I would have uh, uh, something to look back on and see how I thought years from now. Yeah. Not- it, it is a slice of our existence. You know? It, yeah, and us, us recollecting our past now while we remember it could help enable us to remember it in the future when we listen to this. Yeah, I'm, I'm not super into taking photographs and stuff, especially not of myself. Just taking but voice I really, I really like... I have actually a couple of photographs of Cedar Point where we're going up. Because the way it works is there's Sandusky. Yeah. And then there's like a really long road... That goes to the island that is Cedar Point. Yeah. And it's like the amusement park and the facilities there and everything. And I have a picture of us midway down the road and I'm just pointing at the <laughs> pointing at the, the roller coasters and stuff. Uh, I wanna man. Tra- man, I want to travel so bad at all. Like, I've never really we're, traveled. We're going on a... Uh, I was actually late to, to record here because we... Uh, Miranda and I were reserving a, a cabin that we were going to go and hang out in for a week in February. Where is that? Uh, Hocking Hills. It's like, uh, the south, south of the state. It's right by Wayne National Park. Okay. And it's, it's got, like, a lot... I looked at some pictures of the area, mm-hmm. and it looks beautiful. I, um, I'm not gonna lie. The farthest out of state I've ever been is, uh, Alabama. That is pretty far. Dude, I fucking love that place. A lot less racist than you'd think. Alright, I was about to bring up uh, that some, you are you are kind of brown. Some. Not a lot. Okay. Okay. You know, hotels here, when you get breakfast, they have occasional like eggs. Is it like, like really good shit? Dude, you go down there, and then it's straight up just like... Stacks of bacon. And oh really, yes, like, like the good breakfast sausage. Like, that's a, that's like one thing you gotta love about lumpy. the South is that it's it's all it's just indulgent. It's like so much meat. There's like fucking you can get like steak, like breakfast steak, and there's like biscuits and jam, which is like my favorite thing ever. Well, I've always kind of wanted to go to the Southern states just because that also has a lot of history. Me and you are going to Alabama. We're gonna go to a hotel and dude, I'd go there in the morning. I'd get fucked up on biscuits. I'd just be like full of shit. Have it through the day. I'd stop at Popeyes. I've always and wanted it's to so go quiet, to, like, to see like uh, like Louisiana and stuff. Where to, where we to, were to was see really like all close. the old plantation houses and stuff. We were very all the, close to Louisiana. All the history there. It's insane. We were very close to Louisiana. What history's in Ohio? We have Flight. people who we have people who came from here. That's it. I can't go yeah. see the people. They're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, being in the South is just so nice. Like, they have a lot more open land. Like I guess where- I guess an advantage that we have here is you know because we're at the like, the Appalachian foothills, we do have a lot of really nice scenery. Yeah, there's no real historical location. It's more flat down there than it is here, but like the wh- where it, like, it's dr- not we- like uh, like Great Plains flat. It's not Kansas no. flat. No, but it's flat compared to here. Because yeah. Ohio's very not. Ohio, yeah, because, like I said, we're... Uh, App- the, the, more, the south, more south you go in Ohio, the more Appalachian yeah, it gets. Yeah, South Point, Ohio is very close to the Appalachia, right, yeah, dude. Yeah, it's right there by... Uh, 
by West Virginia. Right by Virginia and Kentucky, West yep. Virginia. And, and then the right there is like right where the Appalachians yeah. begin and it goes up. But I mean through the New England states. But being in Alabama. I went there to see my girl well with my girlfriend to see her uncle and cousins. And they they have a house off like off the side of a highway down the road a little bit have a house. They bought the house next to it to use as like their engineer like they like they use the giant garage and they hollowed it out and made it a barn. It's like they just have animals. Like there's ducks and chickens That's running wild. around. They have a bunch of cars they're working on. Behind them is just open fields. You could sit there. If we didn't make a noise, not a noise would happen. Just quiet as shit. No one's around. You're just hanging out, dude. And we had a seafood boil. They just came out and dumped that shit on the table. Oh, and you just grabbed whatever you want. Crabbo. It's fu- dude, just crab- yeah, if you... Because that's another thing, too. Whenever we were... Uh, I went... Uh, a few years back, I went with my cousins to stay in Connecticut. And they yeah. talked about how cheap crab is. Because they live right there. Yeah, it's They're right literally there. miles from the ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually went to Six Flags. Mm-hmm. Um, because Six Flags is literally, like, 40 minutes from their house. That's pretty great. And so they had, like, season passes. They get season passes every year. That was wild. I loved going there. I want to go back I mean, how close see my cousins. Are, how close we were in Alabama to Louisiana. I mean, seafood... We also drove through New York incredible. to get there. New York City. It just a little a, bit. It took me a long time to figure out where that all is. Like, New York and Maine, in my brain, very not how it's supposed to be. Yeah. I always thought, like, for a long time, I saw, like, because the way that people entered the United States, I was like, that has to be New York at the top. But it's Maine. Yeah, it's And then it's right Maine, under that Maine's is, at the very top. Yeah. It's then, just Ellis Island, I think, it became more notorious. Yeah. But, um, the U.S. is weird. But I want to travel. I want to go to Texas. One of my friends uh, has, One thing has family think- in Texas, and it's so cool like it's warm and there's wild shit going on the places in america is what you will love about the place if you ignore the government and you ignore how how some of the people are sometimes the places every state is literally like its own little microcosm absolutely it's so different it's so crazy when you're in alabama like if you're in ohio and you go into a store they're like what do you want like cool thanks (laughs) get out that's, in Alabama, I love the they, call, they call you honeybee. They call you sweetheart. I went to North Carolina a few times, and the people are always really nice. It's, like, it's that southern hospitality. I walked into a Dollar General, and they're like, morning, honeybee. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> it's like, I'd have been like a 60-year-old black yeah, woman. Yeah, because up here... She just makes me so happy. Up up, up north, we get, it's it's all about the business. Like, it's, I, it's just yeah. like, oh, thanks. Skadoodle. I woke up at 10 in the morning. Great night's sleep. Grab a shower, went down, ate a bunch of fucking way too much food. I think that my... Went to Dollar General to get a monster, and they're all so sweet to me. My guess is... <laughs> like, this is incredible. The, it probably has to do with the environment. Because yeah. the climate down south is obviously much hotter. So I think that the people, in turn, just became nice to make Joe, it better. <laughs> Joe Rogan explained uh, why, that, why this part of the world is the way that it is. And it's like, you wake up in the morning, and it's so cold, your fucking bones hurt. And you walk out, and you're like, ah! So you're pissed. And you got, you got sprayed your fucking windows off. <laughs> you're already pissed off. You've been awake 20 minutes. You got a shovel at 5 in the morning. You just Alan, woke up. Alan's dad talks about how he has, um, like, in the winter, he will shower. And he, he strategically places heaters in his house to avoid being cold right out the shower. So yeah. he doesn't already ruin his day. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, people in Texas, you wake up, it's 60 degrees. It gets cold, but it doesn't snow. Yeah. I can deal with cold. I fu- I can't. I want to leave so bad. I hate the snow. Nothing about it is good to me. The only thing... It's the only, pretty My sometime. only issue with leaving, like, the state or something to go to another state is that the family, you know? It's like, like yeah, it's during, <laughs> during Christmas and stuff, <laughs> I want to be able to see uh, my family. Because especially in the, the last few years, I feel like I've, I've reconnected with them. Because, you know, a lot of stuff has, uh, has changed, for uh, especially on my dad's side of the family. Yeah. It's just a lot of a lot of mix-ups and stuff, so I feel like I've really gotten closer to them. And it's weird for me with family because, like, I would just travel to see family. Because that's already what I have to do. Yeah. Like, if I'm here for Christmas, I have to go visit after Christmas to my mom's. So I'm already going a couple hours anyways. Yeah. And no matter, like, I can't see my family 
in close proximity, I'm going to have to travel to see someone. Mm-hmm. So I might as well travel to see both of them. Fuck it. I mean... Uh, I, At that point, yeah. The one's in South Point, one's in Minerva. I'm going to have to go four hours to see them. So if, what's the difference if I move to Tennessee and it's three hours to see them, four additional hours to see them... Uh, and from what I I've heard, Tennessee is, like, a really cool place. Tennessee's lovely. So, surprisingly, like, uh, b- b- business-oriented. We went Like, through, surprisingly metropolitan, I guess is what we I mean. Went, we went through there to get to Alabama. Uh, just It wasn't, like, a long time in there, but went uh, went through Nashville. I think we have a big case of, like, Knox. Clark Kent syndrome. Yeah. Like, like a small, f- small town boy in big city. Yeah. And, and, and smiles because... <laughs> We don't know any better. Yeah. Like, we went through, um, Nash... We went right by Nashville. And we went... We drove through Knoxville. Which was kind of cool, because, you know, Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, that's literally... That's literally why he got his name. Yeah, like, we were, you know, driving through, and there's, like, carpool lanes and shit, and I don't understand it, because my brain's like Ohio brain. (laughs) We don't got that here. Our highway is two lanes. (laughs) This is weird. Uh, At the most, at the most, our highways are, like, yeah, four. Maybe... Maybe six. At Maybe six, and that's if there's exits, and you're coming yeah, on or exactly. off the highway. But like when you get down to, like I know people that lived in Arizona, and they have like a ten Ohio, lane highway. Ohio is a very populous state, but because it's so big, it's all spread out. Tennessee is literally like a strip. Yeah, Tennessee is you go straight through the fucking thing. Yeah, it's not very long up and down, like north to south. Like we were going through it, it's not that big. It's you can go through the whole thing in a couple hours, mm-hmm. and people in Europe talk about that a lot. Like England, like it takes us I six love, hours to get yeah, across listen, England. I, I, there was there was a YouTube channel I follow, and it's a it's a Brit who has moved to the states. Mm-hmm. He actually recently got his citizenship. So, <laughs> okay, it, because it takes forever to do it yeah. here in the states to so to, so many to, to become <laughs> an American citizen. So many of me coming in. It's pretty like, pretty yeah. fucked up, actually. Oh, while uh, we're here, um, unless you're born here, then it's easy. Technically, I'm Puerto Rican, so we're already kind of just exiled Americans. That's really like, fucked up. Yeah, they just own Puerto Rico. All my Guerreros and Perez are just <laughs> accidentally American. It's like Hawaii, but, but even... But like farther. I was saying, uh, he, he was talking about... Uh, the first time he came here, he talked about... He's like, oh yeah, we'll go, we'll see... Uh, we'll see LA, we'll see New York, we'll do it all in a couple days. And... <laughs> couple and the days. person he was with was like, uh, no. Yeah, no. Because... <laughs> In in the UK, yeah. you can literally go from like one end to the other. It's like six in the hours. same. Yes, it's like across the whole fucking thing. From here, six hours barely gets me into Kentucky. Like I get into Kentucky. Yes, and exactly. Kentucky, you, and that's because the next we are state over. we are in like northeastern Ohio, yeah. and the Ohio itself is already a decently large state. <laughs> yeah. So it already take, and we're at the we're close to the top of it. It takes longer to get across Texas than it does to get across the UK. Texas yeah, is that's fucking w- huge. Texas, yeah. Whenever you see Texas on maps, it is not a great portrayal of how big it is. Dude. Because, oh my God. because the way that, whenever you look at a flat map, it does not properly show um, land area. Yeah. Because uh, there's, there's plenty of videos out there telling you about it. But obvious, Alaska is still the biggest. Alaska's fucking... I mean, but it's, it should be Texas its own country. Texas is huge. Texas is big. Texas is fucking big. And I want to go. I want to visit it <laughs> I, so bad. I, me too. You know what? I don't want to go to comedy shows in Austin and just enjoy myself because everyone's happy there. Go to a comedy show here, I guarantee everyone's sitting there with a frown. I realized the pattern um, the other day. A lot of my favorite comedians are from Canada. Tom Green's from Canada. Jim Carrey's from Canada. Norm MacDonald's from Canada. Yeah. Those are like three of my very favorite. A lot of my favorite comedians moved to Texas. Mm. Rogan? <laughs> well, Rogan did, Tom Segura did. Tom Segura. And a bunch of the smaller little ones. like uh, Tom Bert Segura. Like Tom Segura, no. Tom Segura and Bert both came from Tampa. Mm. Uh, uh, Bert, I don't know. Where, I think Bert lives in somewhere, but his wife came from Georgia. <laughs> I remember that. Cause whenever he, I think it's the funniest shit ever. Whenever he mocks his wife, because he makes her sound <laughs> so much more redneck than she is. I've, yeah, like, I've heard I've, she has I've, a southern twang, but he's like, "Bert, I can't, Bert." <laughs> like it makes me Cause, so. Uh, yeah, because if you've seen podcasts, there's a podcast with uh, it's it's Tom Segura's wife and it's Bert Kreischer's wife. Yeah, and um, 
I've seen clips from their podcast, and she does not sound super southern at all. Not the, not the way that he does it. No, not the way that he does it. She has she has a bit of a twang, like you said, but it's not it's not strong like this. No, it's not quite that far. It, it makes me think of. Um, oh, I gotta go grab my laptop charger. Actually, I'll be right back. But it makes me think of whenever Rhett and Link do their southern voices. Yeah, it's funny. So now that that motherfucker is gone, I mean, thank God I can't stand that dude. Oh my God. Can't wait to start my own podcast with his friend Gavin. So they can make it like Beller Jelly or Teller Jelly. I can abandon this whole working title garbage. Go with go with a real man. As cute and fine as Gavin is. This motherfucker Rusty. What's up, man? I have my charger. Oh. Yeah, I guess we're gonna need that since we're gonna be here for another 20 hours. <laughs> I'll need to unplug something, probably. Well, here's the end. Uh, give me that tip, boy. Is this the end of a hero boy named Finn? Hero boy named Finn. Get out! Oh my god. You're oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. You're a little fan with the uh, Balma sticker on it that I actually she, remember. She looking bad as shit. I'm looking bad. <laughs> oh! But yeah. Um, so. How long, how long is this episode? Excuse me. Just crossed an hour and a half. We've talked about we've, dreams maybe we, 20% of we've it. We've discussed like three individual <laughs> dreams. Oh, I mean, you want to you wanna just squeeze some in? I'll, I'll see if I can find some highlights yeah, yeah, real quick. Squeeze a couple in. Um, so this one's definitely a highlight. So in this dream... Um, this would have been shortly after I graduated that I had it. Okay. I had a dream that we got called back to school and basically like we were we would have another year cuz they were like calling a mulligan on my whole on senior that whole year? year. Yeah, on my whole senior year because of quarantine. Dude, the most shitty that would so be. So we we have a meeting in the auto, uh, in the gymnasium. But the gymnasium is vastly different it's like very very big because the way ours is set up is it has the bleachers and it was like a mixture <clears> of <throat> the gymnasium and the high school and the auditorium because okay. it, it was still really big but it had that big stage at the front okay yeah yeah, yeah the long stage yeah and there, there was like a lot a there was a lot of gym. skylights across the top okay so and we all- were we all sat in wooden chairs, and uh, Mr. Yegley told us about uh, what what we were going to expect for the next year. And so as, as as we were leaving, Alan and I went. Alan and I walked home because we were like, "Well, we're already out and about. We might as well go for a walk." And as we passed by, um, as we passed by the elementary school, uh, we noticed it, it's changed a bit. The elementary school. Uh, has like a the playground has like a big trench around it. What? And and so we we go in to see what's going on. We and and there's a bunch of playground equipment over the trench. That's how you get from one side to the other. So we cross it, and we see Matthew McConaughey has has gone rogue, and he is leading a tribe of elementary school children. Like they're all like second, first, and kindergartners. And, and and he's leading them like a like a wild man. What? The and they're fuck? and they're all tribal and they're all like they're like pygmy feral children. Why are they And so they notice that we're there and he sicks them on us. <laughs> and we were like, Oh shit Matthew McConaughey six the children on you? Yeah. It's man. like it's like hundreds of kids that are running after us now. So Alan and I get the fuck out of there and we call the police. Um, but Matthew McConaughey tries to tries to stop us. And, 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 and the <laughs> police have any power over the McConaughey? <laughs> Shoot him dead. <laughs> Pray. <laughs> um, back in Iceland. It's driven by the sockets. sockets. Um, let's see. Here's a. This is part of another one. Um, so our friend Ethan, uh, we were hanging out in the library, 
the, the Plavmeister. Yeah. Okay. We're hanging out in the library, and all their computers are like old '90s computers. Okay. And he shows us, he shows me a bunch of pictures that, that he's he's found, and they're all like nudes of YouTubers. I thought you were saying nudes of me. And no, nudes of you. And I'm like, what? <laughs> they were nudes of YouTubers, like PewDiePie and stuff. I wouldn't want to see that. <laughs> and it, it says here, his OS is Windows 98. <laughs> This is 98. Uh, also, weird shit happening outside the house. Uh, oh, yeah. So, in in this part of the dream, I come back home. I look out my window. And uh, you know how there's, like, a space between the house that's right across the street from us and that next house? Yeah. There was, like, they were, they were, yeah, down, like they were, like, doing, they were, like, doing work. There was people doing work over there. But I guess they seemed really suspicious. And I just kept talking mad shit at them. <laughs> just spouting shit. Yeah, it like it seemed Out like they window. weren't doing legitimate stuff. No, I was like, I was like on the sidewalk, and I was just like, "God, what the fuck are these bozos doing?" <laughs> you're like, they don't look like they're doing legit work. Let's fuck with them. It's yeah, like they're just trying to work. Um, it reminds me of whenever um, when. Because your, your window leads right out to the, the porch roof. Yeah. And you made, I don't know if you remember this, you made this vile concoction in some small bottle. It might have been like a hand sanitizer bottle or something like that. Probably. And you stuck it out in the snow. Oh, yes. And I did I'd that all the in, time in middle school. I'd walk in and you'd just be like looking at it and you'd put it back in the snow. And I'm like, what are you doing? You're like experimenting. And I'd sit beside and your bed. I would bed. take apart pens and stuff. Yeah, I'd sit beside your bed and we'd just talk shit. Uh, I said between there's a space in between like your the way it was laid out like in between your bed and the window. Yeah, because oh. I had my bed in a really weird position in yeah, my room that. at the time. <laughs> I remember that whenever you had everything sitting on boxes. Yeah, I, 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 had, I had my TV on a box for too long. I remember starting my YouTube channel? I was sitting where your uh, where your china cabinet is with all the figures in it. Yeah, I was sitting in that little area. I was like, should I start one? I started one, and I was like, oh shit, that's my dad. What if he doesn't want me to? <laughs> so I ran out and asked him, he's like, I don't give a shit. And then I uploaded all of my Christian B stuff. Yeah. And I had and, butters. And you're, you're in what Isaac's room is now. Yeah, I had butters. I missed that little shit. He was stinky and mean, and he took a lot of work, but dang, he was cute. <laughs> I had a dream about butters. Oh, what is it? I was just, I had him. Like, I, 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 oh, okay. I said on my TV... It was Butter's giant fucking tank, mm-hmm. and I was dropping carrots in for him to eat, and Sebastian was over. Do you remember whenever we, we, we didn't know it at the time, but your dad was house sitting for Miranda's house. Yeah, and the snapping turtle. Yeah, and the we snapping turtle. brought it turtle. over to my house, and, we, and my dad put it in the tank with my turtle. Yeah. He put the giant snapping turtle in with my little turtle. Brenda, Brenda has stories of tying the turtle to a tree and <laughs> letting him run around. <laughs> Anytime she would get close, he would try and chase her. <laughs> uh, he tried to eat my turtle. This dude is literally like a fucking like forty pound snapping turtle. He's huge. Yeah, he was huge. My turtle might have been two pounds. The size up, of my hand. They ended up uh, releasing him though. Releasing him. Yeah. Into the wild. Yeah. <laughs> he's out there probably an apex predator he's still out there sitting in the fucking creek he's wouldn't, waiting wouldn't surprise me it took me a long time to figure out I remember it took me until we went back that one time that we went to the Texas Roadhouse it was me Miranda and, and a homeboy Alonzo? no other homeboy ex homeboy oh what's his name he who shall not be named I genuinely don't, I don't remember. But, no, it's okay. but regardless, uh, we went to, they might have just been me, you, and those two. And we went to Texas Roadhouse. And we went to Almost Heaven. Yeah. Alan might have been there. I can't remember. But then, for some reason or another, we went up to her house to grab something or check on something. Maybe it was to feed the dogs. I don't remember. But I was like, oh, this house is so familiar. It was cold out. We talked to the animals. Yeah. Like, this is so familiar. And I was like, me and my dad went to this house all the time. Mm-hmm. Because I remember, like, it was it's so nice. It's such a big, nice house. Yeah. And I'm like, I remember I like this. staying there because sometimes they'll, sometimes her parents will go on vacation and we'll just, like, house sit. It's so nice in there. Big couch and, like, mm-hmm. the fucking pool in the, oh, my God. We were going there and I was like, these people are so rich. 
like I go there because like, compared to our even our house now, which is nice. Yeah, I'd go there, and this is fucking huge. Mm-hmm. This is an immense home, and there's so much stuff. And they have lots of lots of open space too. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh my god, my dad would listen to like Tech Nine and Hopson the whole way there, and I thought it was <laughs> the most boring shit ever. I remember I'd sit through those songs like, oh, like, oh. It's the same song. It's just, it's like they're almost. I don't. It. It sounds like dad's rapping almost the way that it was at times <laughs> when it was like, ah, oh, you guys sound like you're trying to be cool. Now I have more appreciation for them. They're lyrical and quick, and I was like, this is dumb. <sighs> Turn on something angsty. Uh, yeah, we've left the dream space. I have, uh, let's see, I have a hand, which one, I have a handful of dreams that I could share. Some of these feel like they could just be alternate reality versions of my life. And it's really weird how just, like, normal they are. I mean... Or how borderline normal. Different from my real life, in almost every way. How close to being average. Not, not normal... Like, like, not normal for me. Like, these are things that could feasibly happen under... If I was in different circumstances. Sure. Um, so I'm trying to think if I should share some of those or if I should share some of the real weird ones. I mean, we're running on a uh, short time. Now. Running on empty food review. Um, disappointment isn't measurable. And the <laughs> day is ruined. <laughs> I love that guy. He's a funky uh, little man. I wish I had a Very with strong him opinions. He's very honest. He's like, this is fucking awful. Yeah, I love that. Whoever him. created this should fucking die. Yeah, he says the fuck word. That's what he says. He he's pulls like, out a gun like, and he lays it on the table. Yeah, he says, like, I, uh, I threaten anyone who disagrees with me to come and duel me. He's like, he eats a papadilla and he's like, Papa, <laughs> the fuck over here. <laughs> Papa, I request a duel. He pulls out like a shotgun. He's like, I want you to come to my I'll fucking Try home. this from my cold dead hands, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, he said the N word. I'm not a fan of that. And then he eats the papadilla, and he just goes... <laughs> and he just like starts gagging himself. He vomits into the papadilla. <laughs> and then he eats it. And he's like, this is how I feel this about This is more palatable now that I have vomited into it. <laughs> It'd be more palatable if this was Shaquille O'Neal and I was eating. <laughs> Alright, so... This is the next one I have queued. Had dream. Fully immersive GTA VR. Oh. It's, it's like... It's almost like Sword Art Online, if you know the concept. Yeah. It's like, a, it, it feels, it. you can feel it. Like, you're walking around, everything looks real. You It feels real. Like, it has sensory input. That's cool as shit. Until you're uh, like a car accident. The game is, the game is, all, yes. <laughs> it's like, the oh! game is almost real between the graphics, gameplay, and AI. Me and two dudes fuck around, some, uh, me and two, two friends fuck around, go to some dude's house, him and his girlfriend live there. The guys leave me in the car. It's snowing, and I get a little stuck. So, like, I'm like I'm driving the car yeah. down, and the car gets stuck in the snow. So, we, we... We want to fuck with this neighbor. We want to fuck with this guy. Okay. Um, so, we're, like, we're trying to get him to come out. It's presumably so we could jump him or something. <laughs> so, we make enough noise for him to come out. And he has a bat, and I think he, like, I think he horribly injures the other two dudes. Holy and they're, like, shit. unconscious, and I'm in the bushes, and he doesn't see me. And then I wake up, and that's the end. <laughs> that's the end of that. Um, so the next one's a real short one. Had dream. Competitive grocery shopping. What's that even supposed to mean? <laughs> I don't know. Did that happen in the that's, dream, or was this an idea you had? No. This is in the dream. What I was doing was competitive grocery shopping. I'm not sure how it was competitive. It was competitive. Was it like speed? Was I it don't quantity? Know. I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. It could have been like quantity. Literally quantity, all I like... remember is racing to grab stuff off of shelves. So probably like a speed test. Like a... And then having to like cart check other people. <laughs> you just like... Take but up, you but like they were like comically huge shelves. Like, shelves with, like, 15 tiers. You take a fucking melon out of someone's cart and spike it against the wall so you have to go get a new one. <laughs> um, oh, so... Mate, did you know that Americans call rock melons cantaloupes? Cantaloupes! Um, All so right. He, here's, a, like, an almost realistic one. So I had a dream. I'm in college. I'm in a dorm with a girl. 
uh, and it's very clear that our relationship is um, less than professional, I should say. Okay. Um, Based and on she's the a, ungodly amounts of sex that we were having. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, like, uh, it was like, I don't know if she was my girlfriend in the dream or what, but, like, um, I was at her place, and I remember she went to go get something. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. It was the other way around. Um, I, but I have this very vivid image of the inside of her dorm room, and it was like... It felt like it would have been something from the 90s. Like, she had a box TV that had the VHS built in. Does Marina know about your, your dream girlfriend? <laughs> your sleep girl? I think this was before we got together. Still counts. Okay. Okay, sorry. Any if you hear this, I'm sorry. Any relationships in the past count as cheating now. <laughs> Um, so she's a, she's a petite Asian girl, um, I remember her being very cute, um, uh, I I have a note here, typically not my type, but very pretty. Yeah, you're not huge into Asian. (laughs) No, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. Uh, I think it was, like, personality-wise, she wasn't really my type, but I was still into her. Um, she's asleep on the bed, and I wake up in the middle of the night, uh, presumably next to her. I, I see lights on the other side of her door, uh, and now I have to be quiet, uh, in parentheses, maybe I'm not supposed to be in her room? Like, maybe this is, like, the, like, the, this is the female dorm, yeah, and I'm a breaking a rule by being here. Okay, that makes sense. Um, hot tub in room where I hang out watching some nostalgic, something nostalgic on TV. Nostalgic so, like, critic. Hello? <laughs> I'm not sure what I was watching, but it's pres- I, I think in my head I have it was like the Disney Hercules movie or something like that. Hercules. Yeah, Hercules. TV is an old box style one, something someone would have had 10 years or so ago. So it was it was like the dream could have taken place in the late 90s, early 2000s. Okay. Um, but it was really weird. It felt it felt real almost. I like have... I knew, I knew it wasn't my real life, but it yeah. it still felt like it could have happened. I have dreams that have, are of my youth, and very realistic to me. Like, I have a dream. I have this one reoccurring dream that happens, and it's very uneventful. And I haven't mentioned it yet because it's not very interesting either. But I'll be like in the back of my mom's car, and I'm young enough to where Jackson isn't born yet, and it's just me and like baby Nate. Mm-hmm. And then my mom. And I have, like, a bug juice and some Twizzlers. And she's listening to, like, Fall Out Boy. <laughs> but I remember, it's like, you were driving. And then you pull into this parking lot, like a storage garage. And it's, like, pitch fucking black outside. Like, you see the lights, like, because there's yeah. lights on the garage. And we stop, and a dude opens the window. And he hands me this, like, wrestling figure. That's, like, Jesse from Jesse and Festus. Yeah. And he hands me it, and it's, like, his fucking Jack Pacific old style clunky yeah. hollow figure and then he like looks at me through the window and like, I can't see him all I see is like the breathing like I can see like the, yeah, like the, the fog co- on the, the window fog on the window like he's supposed to be there but I can't make out a face mm. and then like the door opens and I wake up that's really weird like, it doesn't seem like scary like he hands me a toy like I mean he's yeah he's that's just, odd like, it's like it's just I can't tell who he is I don't know what he's doing but he opens the door and I wake up. Here's another one that had the feeling like it could have happened, but very clearly based off of what's in it, it didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a dream. Scooby-Doo-esque adventuring teenagers that grew into adulthood still being friends. Um, it's kind of like Riverdale vibes. Like if you had like a like a, a gritty reboot of Scooby-Doo. Okay. Where they, they were all realistic and they had uh, like sad... <laughs> Um, You're just sad. Only, angsty. only threat I, I remember responding to is a Lovecraftian shadow creature that made nightmare beasts in New York City. If you really think about how stressful the job of finding murderers and like lunatics, yeah, and it, people who dress up like monsters and commit crime, it would probably be pretty upsetting. Honestly, yeah. You'd be like fuck the world, dude. The, the problem is solved off screen, and the question is asked: If we'd be better off forgetting what we'd done and what we know, <laughs> we have one final drink with each other before we forget it all. Fuck. That feels like it would be something cool to write someday, but that's not really my type of my type of thing. It feels more sad and nihilistic. 
write some melancholy books. We should start writing books. That'll be fun. A little like side a gig. Just write some books out. Nothing. Nothing. Put too much stake in. Let me quit my job and start short fighting stories. and fighting and dreaming, writing books. <laughs> Want to be the most starving artist you'll ever meet? I'll be like. There's something to be said about the starving artist archetype, though. I think about. I, I, feel, I feel it feels very compelling to me, but yeah, obviously it's not logically the decision. There's a part I of make. me that wants to move to a place with a great MMA gym. There's a part of me and fighting people and then streaming and recording podcasts. There's a part of me that wants to live out of a bus and be a starving artist. I would live out of a car. Yeah, and, and you know, make content and in another world. Form in another world where I didn't have a girlfriend. It's literally I, only I Lexi have... keeping me from doing that. Yeah. Because, like, there's, like, responsibility, and she's, like, the smarter. Like, <laughs> she she wants to, like, save up for houses and stuff. I think that's, the same, that's me, the same with Miranda. <laughs> like, I, I'm perfectly fine living out of, like, I could live out of my Dodge Dart, eat nothing, but, like, I get a hot plate, and I cook rice and chicken, and I... Do whatever I do, whether it's writing, yeah. whether it's recording, whether it's competing. I, it's just I do my things. It's, it's not necessarily it's something fulfilling. the masculine urge to be a starving artist. It's not necessarily it, something that I feel would be better than what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. But it's something I almost have regret that I haven't been able to do. It's part, you know what I mean? Part of me knows that I can do it. Because of my yeah. history, I have been briefly homeless i've been hungry you know mm -hmm. at the time i had no passions or responsibilities so it'd be a little bit different but yeah, I, kn exactly. I know that i can it, live a it, tough lifestyle with a passionate goal yeah because i've lived a tough lifestyle without any goal at all so mm -hmm. i know that having I, a driving force would I make feel it like achievable to me it's really hard to admit it's really hard to to talk about this stuff without making it sound like you feel like these other people, these responsibilities in your life are holding you back. But uh, it, they're not, you know? It's just like, I yeah. love I love my girlfriend. I love my family. But at the same time, you think about how, how interesting it would be to lead that life. Sometimes I think about how... I don't know if she's the same, but, like, Lexi loves the idea of the normal life. She wants to work... She wants to have a family. She wants to live normal. Thank, I want. It isn't like that, dude. I want greatness so bad that I can't explain me, me it. But too. I'm so constantly held back by the idea of greatness is going to come at the cost of me leaving a lot of shit behind. Yeah. In most people that pursue greatness lose a lot of family. They lose uh, relationships, um, and they lose because pr we, like privileges that I have. You you have to. I feel like. Well, for, for starters, most of the time whenever you pursue greatness, you have to give up, like, everything yeah. else, basically. I wouldn't And have... even then, even then, it's a risky shot. Yeah. Even then, there's no guarantee you that you're going to make it to the other... You and gain get nothing. nothing. Yeah. And then you're just fucked. Like... And that's another big thing, too, is you have to think with rationality, will you be able to reasonably pursue this and achieve it? Yeah. It's that's, like... This... It's, being a dreamer... Is amazing, Just, but at the same time, it's also a curse. The idea of and it's not even like I have a specific thing in mind. Like, of course, I like to fight; that would be fun, or like creating content. I love to be, mm -hmm. I love to talk, and I love to do things. I like to perform. I like to write. Mm -hmm. um, but like, just the idea of greatness, like a mark, like I did something, and I'm high up in what I did, that makes me want to chase that so bad like if i wasn't with lexi i'd be empty but i'd be chasing something great yeah you'd be chasing something else like you'd have a different goal in mind and obviously i'm pretty the way i've always said it, it's like right now i'm set if i stay with lexi if she stays with me this is what i'm cool doing yeah, I'll work, and I, you know, we'll get a place. We'll and obviously, you do hope that you stay together. I hope that this. Yes. is I hope that this is the case. Like as of right now, I would love to just you know stay together. We get a place together. I feel like maybe have a family. It's also kind of a very normal thing, especially. But, I, I can't speak for with women, but I know with men, it's a very normal thing to think. Well, you know, 
what happens if I don't, if this doesn't yeah. work out? You know, as as horrible as that would be. Yeah, like, it's like, I don't want you, this to happen, but yeah. I have a whole plan. And you yeah, should, in case, in case. You know, I'd be a psychopath. God forbid. If if, if, Le- if if Lexi did not end up work, if she just decided not to like me anymore, and it didn't work out, that w- I guarantee I'd spend all of my money just going to different gyms. Like, I would. You, be, I you would, would go whole heart. I would go whole into, heart into I would fight. your passions. I'd probably compete. I would probably be an amateur fighter right now. Not great. honestly, not, same. That, not if, that I'd win. If but my, I think if I wasn't with someone that had a solid state of mind and an understanding of the world, yeah, I would be doing stupid shit. Same. And just my, chasing an endless if pit of a goal. I, my, if my girlfriend didn't live with me and she wasn't a part of my life, I would spend... I would ruin my sleep schedule. I would sleep like how I did before I lived with her. I yeah. would sleep before my shift, after my shift, and in the space between, mm. in, in like the the late daylight hours into the into the, like the, uh, the night, I would spend pursuing my passions. I would stream... You know, I would podcast, I would write, but, but at the same time, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, we'd be so, you'd be running that endless treadmill. And, but the thing is, I'd feel, I think right now I crave that because in terms of passion, my life feels shallow. Yeah. But if you were living that life where you were chasing that passion, you would feel shallow still. Yeah, because you don't have the because you're you don't have you the are compassion. pursuing it. You don't have the compassion. Yeah, you don't you don't have, you don't have the experience of, of you don't have the love. Yeah, yeah. Like, literally, because like, because if once you achieve that dream, that is it. That, that yeah. you don't you don't you don't have the love there to accompany that success. Like you're going to be miserable. More than likely, even though you love what you do, you're going to be miserable. Yes, because you're, you're going to you, come you, home to you, you are dedi- Yes, exactly. You have so- dedicated all of your time, all of your energy to that dream and nothing else. Yeah, and then when you come home, so that's that's it's that's you. where the bittersweetness of it it's comes you in. You and know, alone. that's why we are better off as we are that's now. Why, yeah, that's why I with hope. with our nice, stable girlfriends who love us. That's why I because hope that's how it stays. Even though we are not pursuing our dreams to the fullest, uh, the ins- the insanity that we could, we have. The love to come back to. Yeah. We have at the, you know, you can have all your shit days, but there's always going to be someone there for you to talk to about yeah. it. Yeah. To, 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 to hold you and be like, listen, t- tomorrow's going to be better. Yeah, and there's a whole extent that you can explore your passions with someone. Yeah. But it's going to be... In a limited things, capacity. You're going to have to give and take mm-hmm. a lot of... Which is harder I, I when you feel have like both. Another part of that is just growing up. You know, growing up is a part of that. Yeah. Is you you have Maturing. to be able, to, being able to be mature enough to say, this dream isn't worth necessarily throwing everything away for. Like, at times I wonder, like, so like for me, I want to move out of the state mm-hmm. one day. Yeah. I want to live somewhere else. Me too. Well, well the thing is. Lexi, understandably, she has no desire to do that. Yeah. Like, Lexi would like to stay in Ohio. She loves her job. She works. With, she loves the people she works with. She has family here that she's very close to. And this is what she knows. And I could... I can understand that. I can understand her... But, like, for me, it's like, I need... I need something. Like, you know how cool it would be to... I've always wanted to live in, like, a nice... Like, on the outskirts of a, of a big city... Where it's like a small town almost, like the suburb. Yeah, the suburb. Right outside by where, like where a small you town. where you know a lot of people, and then you can still have access to everything. Like, I don't know how to explain it. I would probably be so broke and experienced. Like, um, I don't know. I'm so compulsive, and Lexi's so not. Where. One day I'd look at my account and realize I have enough money to get to and from England. I have no yeah. plan when I get there. I have no plan when I get back. I don't know how it's going to work. But my brain, if I was alone, you just fuck do it. it. I'm going to England. Yeah. And I would be so enthralled and I'd be so stressed, but I'd be having so much fun. But it would feel so empty because it's alone. I'd be sharing that with yeah, nobody. I, I feel like in talking about this, I have, I, I have answered that. You know, like, I had yeah. that question... Why? Because obviously you you know deep down inside you that we, you would be worse off without these people in Absolutely. your life. Absolutely. 
but you don't have the it's it's one of those things where it's the answer was right in front of you the whole time you just had to come around to see it you just had to see it and so that is us coming around to see it that is why we haven't gone wholeheartedly blindly even yeah. into these passions because we have that would that would require us to sacrifice something that we would be worse off sacrificing. It almost feels better to me to celebrate small goals with someone I love than to celebrate giant Big goals, goals by alone. yourself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like I'm not I'm not getting anything great as a promotion. I might get two more bucks an hour. That's nothing insane. Yeah. I'm celebrating that like I get two more dollars an hour. Me and Lexi get to go out to eat. More. Yeah, you think exactly because like, you have great. so much more stuff to do with someone you love. But then, like, or if, you could be like, I have two bucks an hour more. I can now get you more stuff. Yeah, it's just fun. <laughs> I could do more stuff with you. Exactly. And, and like, but if you like, I finally made a break. You know, like I hit this subscriber count, or I money this many people buy my book. Money and doesn't matter as much if you're alone. All it is is like friends that kind of like you because you do crazy shit. Yeah. And that's it. And you're like, oh fuck! Like, great, I got it. Now I sit on my couch and I yeah, look at nothing. I yeah, then you become like a workaholic. And no one gives a shit about what you're doing. You're so lonely that you keep working on it, and you become great, but you're still so lonely. Yeah, you're you're great, but you're hollow. But like right now, I feel like I'm doing things I enjoy, and I think I could take them farther and become something. But I'm so comfortable now. Like I have things exactly. that I, I have things that I that's, do to take me out of my comfort zone. That's another reason why I started the podcast because I am in a place right now where uh, I have enough room to be able to pursue some of my passions. Yeah, to do something. And, and do it within a reasonable span, space of time. You know, like, we both work a regularly scheduled job. Yeah. So that's why we have these days planned out where we record. Yeah. Because those are the easiest days for us. And it's still and a difficult it, give and take. Yeah. Because some days, sometimes, like last week, I didn't... I, the whole day, um, whenever, we, before leading up to recording the wrestling podcast, I something about me was just like, I don't want to have to sit down and record, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's not, obviously it's not a huge task or anything, you know, because we're not live, I don't have to edit anything. It's kind of just record, you know, we sit down we're and just, talk for a Yeah, we're talking to each other, and the, the it, it's just the machine is here. Yeah. Which you know? honestly I thought would bother me a lot more than it does. Yeah, no, because I, I think another part of it is, it's just, you know, it's just a, a computer, it's not... Talking back the to us or anything. The setup helps because we're just sitting on the couch. Yeah, we too. barely have to acknowledge that it's there. Yeah, because I mean, it's not. We don't say very out of pocket shit a lot of the time, and you know, it's kind of just it flows very naturally. At first, I was worried that it would be me almost putting on a show in a way. That is something because having it's. I say I have experience, but it, I have experience insofar as I've recorded before. Yeah. I wasn't so much worried about. Um, well, I was, I, I was a little bit, because obviously you know me better than almost anyone else, yeah. so you'd be able to tell if I was putting up that front. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'd, I'd for sure know if you were being something besides Being you. facetious, as, as the word is. Um, but, yeah, uh, so, it, this is a reasonable way for us to pursue our dream, because we have a regular schedule, we have the, the time and ability to record decently long sessions. Yeah. And put them up, and you know it's just like something that can grow. You know, yeah, if, it's if, potential. if this exactly it's, if this if this takes off and beces a nice thing, then it's something then that's good. Something that we could uh, continue. We doing. Uh, this is something we have. We are at no risk if this does not fall. If if this falls through, we we yeah. have nothing to lose. Yeah, it's you know, just, it's just like it's just like it's a couple. Hours oh, of time. The, it didn't it didn't take off. Boo hoo. That's it. That, that is the extent. Yeah. I, I still have a microphone. I can do other things with that microphone. You know, I, obviously, I've, I, I've, I've told you I want to do voiceover work eventually. You know, be fun. So, I, I, so, yeah, the microphone is still there for that. Um, but that that's the, the only thing that we would have to lose is just the the, the initial hit. Uh, it doesn't seem that we've taken off, you know. Yeah. But, but we have the time. We have the resources that we can regularly put out 
halfway halfway decent stuff. I feel like if we consistently continue uploading, eventually we're going to form some small type of audience, and that'll be enough for me to be pretty happy. Yeah, if, if we have a small handful of watchers, if we have ten people viewers, that return and watch everyone, um, and I'd if, be so happy. If you've made it to this point, please leave a comment. Uh, you know, even if it's just constructive criticism, something that we could change or alter about the process. Yeah, just say you hate the Mexican kid. Or <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll still appreciate it. Yeah, um, I mean, just just something about the podcast maybe you like or somewhere we could improve. A strange dream. Maybe or, a strange dream. Yeah, a strange dream. Or, maybe talk shit know. about your girlfriend maybe if you really want to. <laughs> That's okay too. <laughs> this is an open space. Yeah. This is a safe space. Judgment free zone. It's the brotherly tug. <laughs> brotherly <laughs> tug. That's what we are, dude. But... Um, uh, I feel much more fulfilled. I feel like this is a very good conversation. This Maybe was a, a conversation productive. I didn't know I needed to have. We went have. from dreams to dreams, though. Yeah, it's... Ex- dreams that's, what the, that's what I was going to fucking bring up! Dreams as Since in Since now we have reached the end, we have talked about dreams as in dreams when, that you have... With literal dreams whenever you're asleep. Yeah. We've talked about the dreams that we have about nostalgia. Yeah. And the dreams that we have for our aspirations. And, I mean... And, and I think that... The, the the title is still apt, and I'm yeah. very happy about that. The weird the weird form that our it actual is. passion dreams yeah. come into play. This is a very productive episode for yeah, me. I think it, it did very cathartic. And we actually got to talk about stuff, and make make some ground. I feel like this is also an episode that the podcast needed because I feel like a lot of times before we've been talking about you know cut and dry, straightforward stuff. Yeah, this is much more open. I thoroughly right. enjoy the flow podcast. Yeah, yeah. It makes me happy. You get more out of it spiritually. And they run a little long, but, you know, five people watch all two hours of it. I, that's, I'm, yeah, that's you've heard what we have to say. incredible to me. That we're, we're putting our thoughts out there. The you, fact that literally anyone, if we got one view on a video like this, the I'd Kingdom be so Come happy. one is like two and a half hours long. Yeah, we have, it, has, yeah. it has like 20 views. And I kind of wonder if we have repeat viewers. Yeah, leave a leave a comment if this is, um, like you're, if, if you have been keeping up with us. I'll send you a picture of my butt. We would like we would <laughs> we would just be, it doesn't show us who watches, or who who the repeats are. Yeah. So if if this is if you're multiple episodes deep and you follow the podcast, please let us know, um, because uh, you know, we just like to know. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a curiosity thing. It's like I I appre- I'd appreciate every person that listens so much. Even if, even if you just listen to one episode, you know that's cool. It's but. not like I put my heart and soul into this all the time, but something about the idea of someone that starts listening someone, someone to that us talk, you someone know? that starts listening to us talk and continues to listen to us talk for an hour or two hours, just the idea that we are found at least relatively interesting in that sense, yeah, means a lot to me. It means a lot and, to me too, and I mean, that, that I someone, feel an instant someone would bond. Find, yeah, someone would find our ramblings entertaining. I feel an instant bond to anyone that would watch multiple videos. I mean, like it's family. It almost makes me upset that I need to wait until Tuesday to put this up because I feel yeah. pretty pretty proud about what I'm we've re- talked I about. Love, I think this one works really well, and if anyone, you know. We we'd be willing if you if you commented something to talk about it on the pod if you had yeah, questions if you had any, or any questions comment. suggestions you know obviously this is an open space a free space um, and right now we don't have a, a very large viewer base so we'll absolutely so it, see if you yeah, comment one hundred percent this is like maybe there's it, one this is going to be if I would say the easiest time to do a Q and A would be at right after like we get a good couple hundred viewers. So then yeah. we have enough uh, enough questions to go through. But, you know, right now, even if we couldn't make a whole episode out of your questions, we could at the very least, you know, just talk about them and then you know, fill in the space with something else. Yeah, I mean, you know, it seems like everything... If, it's a good feeling that every passion I'm pursuing recently feels like it resorts in a family atmosphere. And if we found people that commented or regularly watched... It would feel as though it's a family atmosphere because like, where yeah, I work, you, you, where I work feels like them. where I work feels like family. My gym feels like family. My family obviously feels like family. Mm-hmm. Even my girlfriend's family feels like a family. And you know, if we had viewers that would repeat and interact, it would be like a family. You know, I think it's, just, it's the squad. It's my crew. I really like the result of this thumbnail too. I I just went on and used an AI generated image. 
Um, so I think I think this might be a, the way, going forward the way I do these. Um, just to 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 save potential copyright claims. Yeah. Yeah. If we keep posting like images that belong to anyone, that we're gonna yeah. Like WWE I, or UFC. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to get in trouble. We're not famous enough for that. Yeah, but like in the Unless in the long the, term. Yeah. Unless the aliens one takes off. <laughs> yeah, the aliens. Uh, and, the yeah, UFC, Frankie Edgar. <laughs> Dana White comes to our house and beats us to death. He's like, "There's two options. You can enter a slap. You can enter the sl- a power slap with me. You can power slap with Francis and Ganu. <laughs> or you pay me twenty million dollars." <laughs> Isn't Francis Ngannou the one who punched Danger Aaron in the dick? Yeah. He actually, he's champion, couldn't fight for a while, left, because they wouldn't let him do uh, boxing with celebrities. So now that their champion is gone, because like, there's two things, like there's the unanimous champion, who's the one that beat the previous champ. Yeah. And if they're out for a prolonged amount of time, you can win an interim belt, just to be the champion until the champion comes back. Mm. And then whenever the champion comes back, the interim champ and the unanimous champ fight. They fight, yeah. And then whoever wins is the unanimous champion. That's so sick. John Jones is coming back as a heavyweight to fight Cyril Gaon, and the winner of that will be interim champion. And if and Francis Ngannou ever comes back... Oh my god! Then we can see... Can, Let me know if that happens. I doubt, honestly, like... Actually, they might... That would be wild. They might just make them the actual champion when they come back, but if Francis comes back over time, he will definitely compete for that title. But mm-hmm. imagine John Jones versus Francis Oh, Ngannou. dude! Oh, my lord! That would tear ass! Dude, that would be wild. I'm excited to see Bones back in the in the octagon. It's been three years since he fought last. Because, what, he took down Cupcake, right? Yeah. He, he, and that he, was it? He beat Homeboy, and then he had a couple more fights, and kept doing coke, and he... Did a bunch of shit, and now he's back. And he's like, instead of fighting at one eighty five, now he's at two oh five. He looks like he's two hundred and twenty pounds. So big fucking guy. Francis Ngannou is a fucking truck, and Cyril Gaon's not much smaller. Cyril uh, Gaon, I, I, Cyril I, I, Gaon, I think I've seen him. Cyril Gaon is like six four and two hundred so on pounds. He is not a small man. C- Cyril Gaon. All right. Wait. So. I think we'll we'll call it here. You can show me <laughs> Cyril God once we once we get okay, done. That's but fine. You thank you so much <laughs> yeah. if you if you made it to this point in the podcast. I love you guys very much. We appreciate you, and um, please return for further episodes. Um, next episode should be it. We're, we're ta- we'll be talking about the Maestro series from Peter David that came out um, a couple years ago. I'm excited to learn about it. Yeah. Um. So. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye-bye.